Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. Oh, bro. Oh, my stomach. You okay? Oh, Sounds bad. like your insides are liquefying. Uh, I don't feel good, guys. Were we talking about buying new couch cushions and new uh, covers? You remember the black tar you were talking about that comes out of babies uh, for the first couple Maconium. weeks? Maconium. It sounds like you're making that right now. <laughs> I, I've been having stomach problems. Leave me alone. Let's just start the show. I can't wait. I can't. I can't. Let's just start I'm the crying. show. I'm crying. I can't. Let's just rip a couple oh. more. Oh, I just smelled it. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, Brad, you're dying. <laughs> Did somebody oh, cut oh you open God. and stuff a dead <laughs> raccoon inside of you? Look how red Nick's face is. He's gonna die. Dude, I am like a. I'm like a. I'm like a ten year old child when this shit happens. Like I can't. I you know can't. when? You know when things smell hot. Did I just hear a real yeah, fart when, come when, out of you, when, when, like, the very air that carries the scent is, like, warm I think one of the worst things in the world is when you go into a bathroom in the urinal and it's, like, hot and steamy. Hot piss. And, like, it's, like, evaporating <laughs> up into you. Like, oh, God, it's so bad. It goes through your skin. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and the hot air just expands so it's inescapable. Yeah. It's like when you poop in your toilet right before you take a shower. And, and, but you flush. Well, you do, but... <laughs> After well, the, I do, after I, the shower. I, I flush after the shower because I you don't want to get like you don't want to get Wait. like burned. Oh, oh you, dude, you don't poop in the shower, and smash it down the drain. <laughs> when I'm taking a shit, well, my my drain. When I'm taking, like a, when I'm doing a shit in the shower, I really like. I turn on the shower that. before I wipe, and then you just stick your ass wipe, in there. Hop in the shower, don't Finish the shower, wiping. then flush. Finish wiping. <laughs> yeah, you guys are fucked up in the shower. <laughs> That's like the most efficient way to shit in the shower. To wipe if it's in the shower. What? Right? Oh no, I don't shit in the shower. Oh my no, god! No, but you oh wipe in the shower. Chris Davis is right. We can finally call this the shit show. Uh, this yeah. is shit show. Well, I thought that was the, the name show. of our podcast. I thought oh, that was the name of of us. I've never <laughs> ever once in my life peed in the shower, but I you know I pooped a couple. Times. <laughs> That's a joke, right? You can do what you got to do. That's a joke, right? <laughs> What if you're at a guest Tom house H. and you really have to poop? Where the te- hell has Tom H been? He's mm. been our. He's been our. Uh, he's uh, been lurking. Like uh, our uh, subscriber of the month with an asterisk. What was the asterisk again? Asterisk. I'm supposed to be playing Tom H games, but he hasn't shown up to any of my broadcasts. Oh my god. <laughs> Wipe standing up. What? Wait. Wipe sitting down. Wait. Wipe sitting down. What are <laughs> what? you talking about? Is this gonna be another zip whip? You're not, uh, whip, you're zip not zip supposed to pull the poop Tom H. towards your balls. Tom H. Super hot was on your list. We're playing super hot after the podcast, so stick around, if homie. Brad's stomach will allow it. Wait, if you wipe what? <laughs> We're gonna have another zip whip pee situation here, aren't we? If you're a lady, don't wipe back to front. But like, if, if you're, you're anybody, a guy, don't wipe back to front. Also, don't do that. If you're a guy, also don't do that. No, but like they tell you specifically. But oh, I know. I've always heard that. I'm like, well, what guys doing that? No, get no shit guy. all over their balls. Yeah, who's doing that? <laughs> Who would do that? Nolan, you wipe back to front. Nolan wipes back. <laughs> so the I back of the, I, I do a back and forth motion. Are tainted. No, like I have, I have this memory of when I, I was probably like a three year old that my mom telling me make sure you wipe front to back, and I'm like okay, and ever since then I, I just knew. wait, wait <laughs> but you don't do it with your balls. It's been you know that. right? Yeah, I used the balls. I tuck the balls under. <laughs> oh, wipe with the balls, then shake off the balls. Jesus <laughs> Christ! Shake, oh. shake off the balls into the shell. That's how you use the shells. Oh, there it's you easier go. to clean your balls. This is, than your wait, asshole. do you use one of the shells to cup? Like, okay, cup this has gotten balls. so incredibly wrong. Yeah. Holy God! Oh my God! Are we ready to start? I've been ready like for like an hour. I don't, I don't appreciate this conversation. <laughs> 
Hey everybody! Video <laughs> games. Video games. Am I right? Hi. Am I? <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. Four player podcast, episode five hundred and sixteen. My name is Nicholas Henderson. Yo. Oh, I'm Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Brad. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Nolan Hedstrom. Hey. And Christopher Guthridge. Hello. Joining me this evening, we have. So fucking much to talk about tonight. Mm -hmm. Don't do it, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking do it. Because can you at least wait till I'm not talking? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> until I'm Intro. not talking. Oh my god. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Pretty good. We have so much to talk about, guys. I know. So many video games. This would be a very impressions heavy show. It's starting to get overwhelming. Is anyone feeling the overwhelming pressure of, of 2017 yet? Mm -hmm. I'm playing like Very five impressive. games at a time right now, completely accidentally. Although, so much pressure. Yeah. I think Brad's talking about his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I want to. So I don't want to waste a whole lot of time tonight because we do have. We're going to talk about Sonic Mania. We're going to talk about Agents of Mayhem. I'm going to talk about Observer. There's, there's a lot to talk about. So, without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into feedback from last week's podcast. How does that sound? Sounds horrible. <laughs> I almost held my laughter in. Go ahead, continue. Feedback. <laughs> Show your butt. <laughs> what? Hold it's on. Going... I think I have like a wine cork downstairs. Oh, oh my god. Just plug it in. Those little poop plugs. <laughs> oh my god. I can't do this. Anyways. Oh my god. We're gonna read we're gonna read feedback. <laughs> <laughs> last week's podcast guys i can't do this we can do it i can't do this <laughs> breathe I, can, in. I can read breathe it. in breathe out breathe careful in. with your breathe breathing out. in yeah Woosa. okay feedback from last week's podcast if you didn't know we read feedback if you guys have any thoughts any any commentary any conversations we have on the podcast tonight please leave us a comment at fourplayernetwork.com and we'll read it at the beginning of the next episode I'm going to start right now. First comment comes from Halcyon9. Hmm. He says, fun fact. <clears throat> That's some Star Trek shit or something? Never mind, go ahead. Fun fact, Resident Evil 4 has an adaptive, di adaptive difficulty system too, which is described similar to how it was claimed to work in Hellblade. Yeah. Um, I've seen that video. Have you? He actually linked the video. I haven't actually seen the video I myself. I haven't seen this. How does that but, work? Just if it's too hard, it gets easier. Well, the thing is, like, so? nobody even really knows yet how the Hellblade. And there's actually been talk about the Hellblade situation. Uh, well, that's actually more has to do with the, the deleting of the save thing. But, yeah. like, they're not very clear or very forward about how their systems behind the scenes are working. Mm -hmm. To me, I play the whole game in auto difficulty. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty challenging right up to the end. But I feel like they were. They were adjusting things on the fly that made it that made it that kept it challenging but like the more i died i think it was more about enemies taking more dam or taking less damage to to be killed that kind of thing and or maybe you're doing more damage it was hard to tell it was like i died during a boss fight and i didn't know if the boss fight like started over because it was so seamless and all i know is that i hit a boss like four thousand times uh, hmm. Before he finally died, and then the next time you fought him, it didn't. He died faster than that. No, it, it, when you die on a boss fight, it's not. You can't really tell. Does it just like fade you back? Like what part of that of boss fight? fight you're at? Hmm. You just go back to wailing on the motherfucker. Really? And, there's also also. I there's, tell. Do you finish the game, Brad? By no, no, no. Oh, okay. No. Well, I might bring it up again in a little while because I did finish it. But we'll talk about it more. But yeah, apparently Resident Evil 4 has a similar uh, adaptive difficulty system, which is crazy. I didn't really know this until this, this this whole thing came up when Hellblade started talking about this. So I didn't even think about it. But like, it's weird yeah. to think a game like Resident Evil 4, which has had so many versions of that game across multiple platforms, and everybody loves that game, and like nobody has ever said anything about this until just now. No, 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 that video has been around for a while. Yeah, but like nobody's like it, that Brought video started it spreading like wildfire the mm. moment Hellblade um, became mm. kind of an issue. But mm. um, but the, the only difference is Hellblade was like, hey, by the way, we use an adaptive difficulty system, so people are like, how the fuck does that work? Nobody really knows. Um, <clears throat> CDV <laughs> says this is for you, Crispy. This is actually a comment based on something that happened after the show, so I can tell this person was watching live. 
Venmo is like the easiest thing in the world to set up. <laughs> Please, Crispy. You just connect whatever bank account you want. Then you can transfer all the money that has been sent to your Venmo account to your specified bank account whenever you choose to. It's calling you out, Crispy. Also, I'm loving avoiding the puddle right now, especially building up to my... Qu he says building up to my... Building up my Quan for Tekken 7? Is that a character? I'm assuming Quan's a character. No. Oh, it's Haste. Quan. Haste has... Oh, yeah, has, Haste. Haste has outed himself as CDV. Um, I, I haven't watched the feed very often, so I don't know if you have, but I hope you play some more Tekken on stream, Brad. I can't do that. For my own sake, for y'all's sake. Brad's a scrub. I can't do it. The, uh, also, Kiranu in chat says the original Devil May Cry has adaptive difficulty. Really? Think so it didn't happen. No, I mean, I think I think that they're. I mean, in Devil May Cry, if you died too much, it would like ask you if you wanted to go to easy mode. Hopefully, that's not what he's talking about. Like this is more like this is in in Hellblade. It doesn't tell you when it's like, like ramping up or knocking down the difficulty. It just does it behind just the scenes, it, yeah. and you don't. I really feel know. like a lot of games over the history of video games have like secretly like done that, ma made shit a little hard. You know, I felt like M. Bison from Street Fighter Two. That dude, he fucking knows when you're doing good, and he just starts cheaping you out. He cheaps you out. Fuck M. Bison. Fuck you of the week. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Fourth Dictate. Horseman. Damn it! Another podcast talking about PUBG. Uh. uh on a serious side, though, I started playing it for the first time yeah. last week. Uh, I'm having a similar experience that, uh, to Nolan, uh, spending so much time scavenging but not exactly having fun. Is that kind of on par with what you described? Well, the, the concept, you you were having fun. Well, no, so the, the thing I brought up last week, and actually what I've been talking about with the community members I've played the game with, is there's two different play styles to this game. You can land somewhere where nobody is, yeah. spend 20, 30 minutes scavenging, finding little bits and pieces, and then go and fight people and maybe die. Yeah. Or you can land in very heavy traffic areas where there's a lot of people. So if you die, you end up doing very early. That way, yeah. you can just start another match. Gotcha. So yeah, that's that's. And kinda... you get better at actually. Yeah, no, engaging the, 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 with people. the problem is you can you can play this game for like forty hours, and but if you keep hiding and not doing much, you never really have a chance yeah, to get better it, at combat. It seems like that would be a situation where it's like play the like land in highly trafficked areas, get yeah. good at, get good at like engaging with other players, and yeah. then switch. Correct. Yeah. Um, he goes on to say, I'll try jumping into firefights more often from the start and hope that bumps up the fun. It's a good but idea. as it is, I feel like I'm going long periods not seeing people. Don't play um, that way. Maybe they're camping in bathrooms or something. And it's not really fun when I do because when you are shot, it's almost immediate, so you may not ha even realize someone is there. Yep. Uh, the I idea behind it is cool, and, I'm, and I'll keep trying it, but so far I'm not seeing the hype several hours in. I would say, I mean, I, I can't speak for it because I haven't played it yet myself, but it does seem like one of those games where... You really do just kind of have to play and experiment a little bit until you find your uh, sweet spot, maybe? It's it's weird because, like, <clears throat> and we've talked about it a little bit before, but your distance of engagement also changes the longer you wait. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because those early firefights, those are going to be people that are, like, mm -hmm. really close to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you wait till the very end, even though there's less area to play, you're talking about, like, sniper battles at that yeah. point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if that's your thing, if you're a really patient type... Yeah. I kind of like it. You know, I thought of another game that has adapted difficulty, Bloodborne. See, the game detects if you're not a true Souls fan, like if you don't like the multiplayer. Uh, and then what it does is it makes the bosses not have leaks. like really difficult patterns. It makes it super easy for you. I feel like that's Brad being a smartass, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Just, 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 <laughs> just making sure I'm interpreting correctly. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Miklopa. The Almighty. Miklopa. The Almighty. Miklopa. Uh, he says, Miklopa. Allow me to use my lurker expertise to help shine some light on the mystery of when did Carlos actually show up on the feed. Oh. Uh, he started appearing somewhere around December 2009. He's been, play he's been seen playing Fatal Frame along with Brad. He also has been seen attempting to beat Black, a ball-shaped character on an Xbox Live Arcade game that Brad oh, for like a week. It, what was that game called? What it, was that? It that, came from the ground yeah, or some yeah, shit like that? Yeah, it came from that? the ground with the little ball and you would like hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good it, game. It was like Tekken Ball. Yeah. Uh, um, not, much else, not much else is remembered about his streams, but he gained uh, his worldwide known fame around the first half of February 2010. He showed up to play some Demon Souls along with Brad and created a character named Ramon. <laughs> Oh, if you're Ramon. interested, if you are interested in Ramon, if you are interested in Ramon, we've come to learn that there's his, clips of Ramon. 
We've come to learn that his favorite food is tequila, and he likes the ladies. He went out <laughs> drinking with another knight and killed him, then proceeded to knight himself. Not, <laughs> not much else is known about Ramon, except that he was shit at camera controls. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. And everything that he just described sounds like Carlos yeah. to a T. Um, so there's your little <laughs> history lesson. Uh, and this is also a continuation of last week. We had a conversation about Tobley, who was commenting on his disappointment with, with Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, he said this week, last week I commented on how I felt about Horizon, focusing on my issues with story, characterization, acting, which Nick strongly disagreed with, which I did, and I continue to. I have now finished Horizon, and my feelings on the game did not improve. They deteriorated, but not because I completed it. What did change my, uh, what did change about my perception of Horizon was that I played through what I now consider to be the gold standard of human interactions in video games. That game is Uncharted 4. What? what? I thought I was going to say Breath of the Wild. Dude, he's... Because he, I feel like that happened to a lot of people, but... I don't, like, I don't, you know, and I commented back on, on that. Cause different it, cause games. It, right? it's my, my problem with this philosophy is that it sounds like he's letting uh, other games taint his experience with a completely well, unrelated game, which... But, like, you know, Naughty Dog kind of elevates that... Uh, the character interaction, yeah, but like, cutscenes. Sure, and... sure, but like Horizon comes pretty fucking like Horizon is no. It, that game has fantastic characterization and acting and voice acting and 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 storytelling. But does it and seem all like they do a lot it of? It may uh... not be fucking Naughty Dog, but if like it, it kind of makes it sound like he's not really going to like if any other if any other game out there tries to tell a story in, in a in a serious way and tries to get the player engaged in the way. It, a Naughty Dog game does. If it's not Naughty Dog, it sounds like it's not going to live up to his his standards, which just seems kind of unfair. Well, you know what? Recommend uh, Hellblade to this motherfucker. Because I would. I, 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 would I do recommend think Hellblade. that, although Hellblade's a little different because there's not a lot of characters interacting with each other directly. But uh, I've always thought that Ninja Theory was kind of working in the same realm as Naughty Dog when it comes to making really interesting character interactions. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I think I do agree with him that I think Uncharted 4 is another ex- example of like the gold standard of you know, storytelling and characterization in games. Um I I I I think I think Naughty Dog in general, I think Last of Us, I think all the Uncharted games um do that exceptionally well. Wait, it, what's it called though? Like they, they they call it something when they record all the lines while they're actually like physically acting out scenes. Yeah, um, uh, I can't remember. I the, know what you're talking about, but I can't. I oh, can't think performance of it. capture. Performance, yeah, performance capture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah and yeah. and you know they. I'm pretty sure that if I remember correctly, they used a lot of that that same technique in the making of Horizon. I just mm. you know I Naughty Dog just happens to be really fucking good at it. But I do. I I certainly think. If you took Naughty Dog out of the equation, Horizon would be up there as one of the best out there. I've not um, played it, so you should you should play it. But yeah, you're right. I th- I would recommend if he if he's into that if he's into storytelling in games, um, I would recommend Hellblade. I actually finished Hellblade. I'll talk a little bit more, just a little bit about Hellblade later after we get through some of the newer stuff. I recommend Enslaved Odyssey to the West. Yeah, you know, what, honestly, I recommend almost anything that Ninja Theory has done. To be honest, I think I think at, at least from a storytelling perspective, I think they're all. Hey, great! When's Andy Serkis going to be in a Naughty Dog game? That seems that like a be, match made in yeah, heaven. A good villain. Yeah, that is true. You know, he, he's. Uh, this is kind of a news topic. Oh, we'll talk about it later. He's in the news, kind of. He announced he's he has a studio that announced a game, recently. Or he didn't own a studio, but he's working with a studio to make a game that's cool. been announced. Anyways, cool. Um, but yeah, thank you, thank you guys so much for the feedback. Uh, we really appreciate it every week. If there's anything that we talk about tonight that you want to chime in on, leave your opinions, please leave us a comment at fourplayernetwork.com and we will read it Do and it. respond to it at the beginning of our very next episode. Do it. Um, but for now, let's jump in because we got a lot of games to go through oh, tonight. We do. Um, I don't really know where we want to start. The biggest game of the week? I'm a- assuming you're talking about the one on the left? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, let's talk about Sanic. Let's talk mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. Sonic mm-hmm. fucking mm-hmm. mania. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna start this out. I, 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 did, I made an impor- impulse buy last night. I bought Sonic Mania. Wow. After Why? That's weird though. Why? I was. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. I've been hearing a lot of hype about it. A lot of people very enthusiastic about it. And I played some Sonic back in the day. You know, on the Genesis. On like, the Genesis. Like, but th- like I said, that's before I was ever really into. This is around the same time I was playing things like. Mario Kart, and I had a Super NES, and I was like, ah, I don't really care much about games. This was all around that same time period. So I didn't really get serious about it. Um, 
But I remember certain things about Sonic that I loved, like the music. I mm -hmm. think the music is, is fantastic, and like I've always liked the look of it. I've just never, I just realized I've never really given a 2D Sonic game a chance and like been serious about playing it and trying to get good at it. So I decided 20 bucks. Everyone's raving about this one. They're saying it's probably one of the best Sonic games ever made. I've only ever played Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast, and I played that game to completion, hmm. but this is a totally different animal. You know what's weird, though? What? Like, this is obviously emulating Genesis yeah. Sonic games, right? Or, you know, back... The 2D games, back when the series was, like, good and respected and... Yes. Allegedly. This is... This uh, but, like, a lot of Sonic fans skew really young, and if you think about it, they were born after the good games were even a thing, which means they came into Sonic after the games were already bad, yet they still became huge Sonic fans. Yeah. Why are Sonic fans so young? What are they doing and playing that, that's making them Sonic fans? Because I'm pretty sure it's not this kind of shit. That's a good it's question. It's social media. You're, I mean, he is a mascot character. You gotta oh, remember you, that, too. The, <laughs> but A mascot character. But never mind. I think, I think Sonic is as much a meme as it is anybody. No, people legitimately love Sonic. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, why not? I mean, but there's like, nothing... Like, not just furries. But even, like, but even, young... but even, even if someone was born after these games came out, and they probably doesn't mean they couldn't have gone back and played them and liked them a lot. I, it's, 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 it's really hard to say. Yeah, but, 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 like, there is something appealing about the way a Sonic game looks and sounds and yeah, all I mean, stuff. Yeah, no, the music's You're, always been great. I mean, we're talking about, like, kids playing, like, like you said, they came into it when the Sonic games were bad, but they were also kids. So, yeah. they just so like I mean, they just don't know any Didn't better. Know. Like, yeah, no, I mean, I, I feel, I feel that's. And you know what? Kind of like spiral. everybody. Oh, Kieran in chat says deviant, deviant art. Deviant art is responsible yeah. for all this. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I do. The role. I think what kind of tempted me to play it is, is part of me is was curious because obviously when Sonic's been getting a lot of shit for the past few years, right? Because the games have been a few years. Yeah, Jesus Christ, a long time. The games have literally sucked. Like, maybe Sonic Adventure was okay. It's not. But, like, hey. they've sucked since then. I mean, some people are like, oh, Colors is okay, and <laughs> Generations is not bad if you with the patch. Or, I mean, it's just, they're not, they're not high-quality games. Like, this shit used to be synonymous with, like, Mario Brothers. It sure as shit ain't that anymore, and it hasn't been that since this era of games, since sure. they have been like this. So... I think I was tempted because obviously it's. I know the hit, the 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 state of the Sonic franchise mm -hmm. uh, yeah. at this point, and to hear people raving about it and and being it's super the, super excited about it was tempting. And not to mention, it came out on Switch, and I wanted something new to play on my Switch. Yeah. I I booted up my Switch last night for the first time since I put down Breath of the Wild. So mm. that in and of itself was pretty cool. I brought my Switch with me today so I could play some Sonic. Like I wanted something new to play, and I popped this in last night. And I'll be honest, I learned real quick, guys, I don't know how to fucking play Sonic. Okay, so, so let's have a conversation about that because, <laughs> because you're not the only one. Sonic, I also don't know how to play Sonic. Sonic is not like an easy game. And a lot of other people don't know how to play Sonic. And it, 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 it's because, it's it's you're right, it's not easy. We're going to talk about that in a second, too, because I've been struggling. But it, it's that uh, oh, it's it's, it's that Sonic is like this mythological video game math, mascot at this point. Um who is all about going fast, right? Yeah, Gotta go fast. He goes fast, right? So, but like, but like these fast. levels are filled with stuff, like secrets and hidden paths. Like not hidden paths, just like so many paths. You know, you could. There's so many, so much space in a Sonic level. But if you're just running through it, you're not seeing any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It, 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 and so it's like, do I slow down? Do I explore a little bit? Am I just supposed to go fast? Because if I go fast, I miss everything, Not you know? Mention, my problem is when I go fast, I hit things every five seconds. And I Which is the other horrible thing. And, you know, <laughs> it, it's, always, it's always like, well, as long as you got one ring, you're good. I run into a, a certain thing here about Sonic. Now, I, I played, I dabbled in Sonic back in the day. Yep, I got it. I've dabbled in Sonic back in the day, but I've never been a Sonic fan. You know, I like Mario Brothers. Sue me, right? The well, Age, I mean, of, the Ma Age Ma of War. Mario was better. I mean, so here's my opinion, real quick, to get on that rant. Yeah, Sonic was, oh, uh, what, 16 bit, right? And, and Super Nintendo was 8 bit or 16, 32, well, I mean, yeah. whatever it fucking was. Yeah, it was better. Um, 
And yo, I like I like Sonic because it's so fast and you get to go fast and Mario's slow. Mario's slow, but you have to actually be fucking pay attention to what you're doing. Sonic is just like, yeah, go fast. Oh, I lost my rings. Also, Mario isn't slow either. I mean, no, no, it's definitely not slow. Who's playing this? Because they suck. It's me. <laughs> ah, Welcome suck. to Sonic. You get hit by shit and you lose all your fucking rings. And you know why it's so goddamn frustrating? I hate that. It. it it's not, you know, obviously you can hold on to one ring and that's great, right? Yeah. But what's frustrating is, like, the only way to get more lives in this game is to get 100 rings. It is so hard to keep enough rings to get to 100 rings to get that extra life. It's not like Mario, where you get 100 coins and you get hit, whatever, you still have 89 fucking coins, just get some more coins, you get an extra life. In this game, it's, you just start spiraling downward. You start running into shit and, like, missing shit. You see how I missed that? It just flew me up. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, I never have enough rings to get that extra life, and you have to beat two levels. Like, if you run out of lives, you get a game over. That puts you back to the first level of a zone. Yeah. And, so you essentially and, have to get through and, two zones. And, two and two as levels, the levels right? get harder, so it's like they're not even really two levels. It's just like one level with a mid you know, midpoint, like, boss and checkpoint, and if you lose all your lives, you gotta do the whole fucking level over again. Yeah, it's, I fought that boss, oh. that boss, that boss, that boss that you were fighting, that mini boss that you were fighting one. with the spinning balls, yeah. whatever there, yeah. I fought that dude, like, four times already. <laughs> I played this game last night, yeah. because I have to keep restarting. Now, with that said, um, I can definitely see where there's room to, to learn and get better good at this and i mean i guess but like you, if you're really meticulous on a level but you just get hit once you lose all your rings you know you're not going to get that extra fucking life that you might really need and uh it, it's like I, I where i'm i am now it's really frustrating because there are like pits yeah instant death shit squishes you doesn't matter how many rings you have you die and because everything is so fast like, it's really easy to, like, not see where you're going because you're hitting these springs and mm -hmm. shit. And, like, you, you, you land on some spikes, well, you thing, fall on you, a pit, you can't and all exactly, of a sudden you're doing two levels You can't over change, again. like, directory or, like, direction when you're flying through the air. You know what I'm saying? Is that if you hit one of those springs, it's just that's where you're yeah. going now. You can't, like, decide to change halfway through the jump. And, and it's not just that, but if you hit a spring... And you're and you're running on the, like the wall and the ceiling. If you Boring. hit in the wrong direction, you could just fall into a pit. And that yeah. was happened to me the other uh, today because I didn't know which direction to be holding to let the fucking. So can I just real quick? I think an important. I mean, I'm gonna jump into that both of us have, been, have had kind of a. It, sa it sounds kind of negative. I don't know. I'm negative. I don't like the way Sonic feels. Because, you know, like in Mario Brothers, right? He has a fucking run, right? Yeah. And, and, and you build up a little speed, but you really get going. But the other thing is you hold down that run button from a dead stop. You can already jump higher, you know? You could spring off an enemy to, to, like, to like build momentum from a dead spot quickly. Sonic, no matter what, yeah. like, like, he... Building momentum is such. Oh like my god, sure. it's so long to build yeah. momentum. Now you could do your little spin thing, but again, you're just you're just giving away control, you know, and, and, and just praying to the gods that you're not going to hit some bullshit doing that little spring. And the other frustrating thing about that stupid fucking spring, and I'm doing it here, is that you have to be at a dead fucking stop. To if you're moving at all, he's, he's not going to do the fucking charge. And it's so maddening because you're like, please stop. And then yeah. and then he's not stopped, so he just starts rolling around some fucking more. And you're like, okay, please stop rolling around. Please, I just want to fucking charge. I just want to fucking charge. And, and it, it's like, it's like, but here's, you know, it's fast and it looks beautiful. But here's the and important. there's all these alternate paths. Here's right? the important the way thing. It feels. Here's the important thing. This is Sonic. Like this oh, is, this is Sonic, um, and that's why I think this is getting good reviews. Not because no, this is like some amazing game, but because they finally, finally, finally made a game that actually is old school Sonic, and I think it's being applauded because of that. Well, yeah, I, I think I think the people, I think that's kind of what fans of Sonic have wanted for a while. And, and no, they wanted Deviant Art. They're sick okay. fucks. <laughs> no, they wanted Chili Cheese Dogs and Super Saiyans. I mean. I'm I'm I fully intend to keep playing this and 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 see if you know maybe I get a little bit better at it and and like for me it's like if I can just go a little bit longer without hitting something and getting better at kind of thinking on my toes and 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 reacting before I hit something like if I can get just a little bit better at that I feel like it'll be a way more enjoyable experience for me. No, you ain't gonna go fast. I mean, but you're Sonic. You gotta go fast. I mean, the thing is, I, I think Sonic is honestly fighting against the level. Like, it, you're at odds with the level. These springs, they want to fuck your life, right? Well, yeah. Or, 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 like, they have these jumps where, like, 
they're like real sneaky. Like if you don't do it just right, <laughs> you're gonna miss the little TV secret. And it's like fuck you, you know. Like like it, and, and it's 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 coming to grips with the the fact that the levels against you. Not like it is in other levels, but like it's trying to trick you into. It's being very like pedantic about it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I do, the thing that I do want to talk say positively about this game is that it's like dark. I think it's. Basically, the dark. Go ahead. Like I think this is a really beautiful game oh, in terms yeah. of like yeah, it's it, it's good. it is so cool to be playing a game that looks and, and feels like this this day and age and 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 especially i'm having a really great time playing it on my switch especially in portable mode um seems it, like a pretty good game for the switch it's a, yeah it's a great it's a great game to play on the go it's a shovel knight. What uh what nothing well, I'm, I'm not knocking shovel knight no i know that's what you think like, but like you would have, definitely have a much better time with that I think you're gonna run into some of the shit that I'm doing, like here. No, I'm gonna sure. Be like fuck this goddamn game because you know Chai Chai predicted it too when I d started downloading the game. Chai Chai's like, Brad's not gonna like this game because the life system, and he hates bad life systems, and this game has a bad life system. So, so here's something that's so stupid. It was a comedy of errors today, right? You're safe. Like if you lose all your lives, uh, you you start from the beginning of yeah. the level, right? But if if you're if you're on, like if you're on that first level, let's say halfway into that level, you lose a life, and you're like, fuck that! I have to be two levels and two bosses. I just want to load my save to where I have all my lives again, right? Uh, yeah. Like I was doing this level, I I lost a life. I fell into a pit at the very beginning of a stage, and I was like, fuck this! I'm exiting. I'm loading my save. I still only had two lives. It wasn't the three lives, which means. I had to kill myself <laughs> three times. You know what's really hard to do? Kill yourself. Kill yourself in Sonic, because you get hit, you mm -hmm. bounce back, Grab and there's rings ring. bouncing yeah. all over all over the place, and you eventually, ultimately, you'll get one fucking ring. And you're like, okay, I have a ring. I got to get hit again, and the ring and fucking tails. If he touches the ring, you get that ring back. Uh, so yeah. I'm just desperately trying to kill myself two more times so I can I can load this level with a full set of lives because what's the point of doing two full levels and two bosses with only two lives like it's it's literally you know like 33 percent harder or not I mean not even that it's, oh, it's math it's like exponentially harder in some cases right yeah. and, and and you it's so hard to kill yourself unless you start the level like at a pit yeah <laughs> you know you're gonna have a bad time. I do. I, I already feel myself getting a little bit better at it, though, as I'm playing. Um, you could turn off tails only at the start of the game. Oh, wow. from what I could, I could tell. I'm just right now. I like the, 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 what I wish. What I really wish, because I was I I picked this up and I was like, and I realized pretty quickly that I think I would enjoy it a lot more if I had that nostalgia factor, but Probably. I don't. Um, but it's weird because like, like this is supposed to be a beautiful like love letter to people who remember classic sonic levels like i remember green hill zone right that's about it mm -hmm. that's about all i remember Music's good. uh and, and look and what they've done with this as a as like a technologically speaking is phenomenal i think it's great um but i don't have i don't have that nostalgia factor but i do just barely remember little bits and pieces of sonic i'm like i think i remember this i have like a like, like a very min my my like minor nostalgia factor and it's just it's just enough to kind of make me appreciate it i don't that's all it's, it's really hard to describe but you know i don't know i'm gonna keep going it's it's cool Good luck. what why does everybody want chaos emeralds no stop it okay that's you're no getting, one knows no one cares you're getting into some sonic adventure lore. shit aren't you stop it i just i just want to know what the deal is that's how you that, that's, that's how not what this game's about does does dr robotnik want to turn everyone into robots eggman. or does he want okay i'm sorry does dr eggman want to turn everyone into robots or does he want chaos emeralds or does he want both isn't chaos emeralds what turns sonic into a super saiyan Okay. I don't, next game. I don't know. What's next what do, in the game? What do Chaos Emeralds do? That literally happened in Sonic Adventure, by it's the way. It's so fucking anime, too. You know how I know this is for gross DeviantArt kids? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there's, beautiful, there's beautiful stuff on DeviantArt. This is the first Sonic game. I'm pretty sure. Actually, I don't know. I don't play fucking Sonic games. I'm a grown-ass man. He does a Naruto run. He fucking holds uh, his hands up yeah. behind his body <laughs> anime style. I don't think he did that on the Genesis, which means that shit was made sure just for the Naruto fans. I'm pretty sure he did. I don't think so. Someone pull up an animated sprite from the I Genesis Sonic. I don't think Naruto Sonic. was the first one that had people running with their arms. I know, but it's some gross anime shit. I think it looks cool. I kind of like Naruto. But, I do too. But uh, well, you're a gross anime kid. Yeah, pre filler, pre filler. 
Um, Dude, I watched all the filler, and it was He terrible. did? He did do the, the, the Naruto hands? Uh, maybe it just didn't look as good, so you, it was no, hard to tell. No, he didn't do it. Yeah, you couldn't tell. <laughs> like, the, this Sonic There's too Man- much of this bullshit in the game, Sonic too. Mania is very crisp. I mean, it, it's definitely, like, like the graphics are very retro. It's very, it very obviously looks like the sequel to Sonic. What was it? Sonic 3 was the last one that looked like this? Yeah. So this is, like, what people are no, kind of considering Sonic, Sonic 4. And there's others, like Sonic CD, but yeah, I mean... Um, uh, but Sega themselves tried to do this with Sonic 4, yeah. which was such a dope-ass thing when you say, you know what, I know it's been 10 fucking years, but boom, Sonic 4, bitch. Or, but wasn't you know, Sonic 4, long. like, It was terrible. Panned? It was episodic. Only two episodes came out, and they were both terrible. I think that's accurate. Wait, they, they did two episodes, and they realized it was a lost cause? Yeah, no, it was awful, and no one liked it. Oh, man. <laughs> that fucking I like sucks. the Sonic cartoon show. Anyways, I, yeah. let's move on. I'm gonna keep playing some Sonic. That's Mania. where the Chili Dogs came from. Yep. Right. Yes, correct. That that is where they were introduced into canon. Correct. That's where they became canon. Chili Dogs. <gasps> yep. Sonic uh, loves Chili Dogs. So does Naruto do it because of Sonic? Maybe. 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 Ooh. He maybe does it because it makes him go on fast. He does bread. it because it's perfect aerodynamics. Yeah. Like, what are you gonna do? Just keep your arms. Gotta go fast, your bread. <laughs> That's fucking. All right, we have uh, we have more games. Uh, I have a game I like to talk swing about. Swing them around. Been waiting to talk about this one. Okay. Observer. Oh. Observer. Observer. I uh, spelled that wrong. I did? No, I didn't. Shut up. It's Observer. Uh, this is a game from <laughs> Bloober. Did I tell you these layers of fear guys are one to watch out for? No. Wait. I don't ever remember you saying that ever. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think In so. Fact, I remember you being pretty critical of layers of fear. I'm, no, I was the one who was like, dude, Layers of Fear, y'all should try this thing. It's you, do remember when I, you do remember when I played Layers of Fear Yeah, the it theater. was like much later. No, yeah. I'm pretty sure you were like, this game sucks, this is butt, your butt. <laughs> okay. Anyways, Bloober, the guys that made Layers of Fear. Which, if you remember, Layers, layers of Fear was very much kind of, it, it, it ultimately felt kind of, it was kind of simple, it was kind of like a... Uh, uh, Pootie Pie Fodder? Yeah, but it but was... But a good one. Yeah, good good one. But it was, it, more or less, it was a walk through a fun house type mm-hmm. of yeah. experience and there were some very very light puzzle elements to it um this new game from bloober is a like cyberpunk detective whoa uh, i like both those words yeah, yeah. keep going cyberpunk horror. detective stop. survival horror oh wait rain it back wait rain it back i don't like those other uh, words okay oh, do you have to read a bunch of stuff i mean yeah brad it's a, it's a game with a story <laughs> and there are things to to find out if you're willing to look for them so yes there are there are notes there are things there are computers you can look at you can read emails yes words it is, is, it is a game with but, I mean, words how, how important do i like I, I don't have to read notes in resident evil to enjoy oh, resident evil. let cool. me tell you okay let me tell you because in, in this particular scenario okay so i didn't know what to expect from this game uh booted it up it's immediately struck me as like oh okay i can see this is like cyber it feels very blade runnery at first like the way the world looks it's very rainy and dark and like lots of neon stuff (laughs) (laughs) i feel i feel like this is how crispy feels all the time well i do (laughs) i did watch blade runner very recently so it's kind of fresh on my mind yeah, kind of. but that was pretty funny crispy um so you play this detective decker no you play as detective, who at the very beginning of the game you don't really know much about the world or how it works, but you find out he gets a he gets a phone call, an anonymous or he gets a phone call from his estranged son who he has not seen in many years. Oh, they still have phones. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Go ahead. Go <laughs> calm on. yourself, Crispy. Calm <laughs> yourself. Gets a phone call from his estranged son who he has not seen in many years, uh, and it it leads him back to this uh, apartment or complex. God, really, Brad? Now. You're killing me. Uh, no, I, you're killing me. He's gonna have a hemorrhage. He's Adjusting gonna, myself. He's gonna Go die like that one dude. Do you know who he goes to find his son, leads him to this apartment complex. Right yeah. when he gets there, he finds an apartment with a corpse in it. Hmm. And that this isn't is, his son. That it, well, it's headless, so he doesn't know. Oh, <laughs> we can't tell by his so, son's parts. This is where I was. I started to get this feeling like, oh shit, this is not what I was expecting it to be, because you're in this apart. You're in this apartment, and he is. He, this detective is what they in this world they call an observer. Mm. And it's basically a detective who is given this uh, technology that allows him to hack into people's brains and see their their memories and their dreams and their thoughts in order to find evidence in crimes, right? So he is licensed to be an observer. Sure. Uh, so he can actually, and this is also kind of very deus ex, it's a world where most people in the world have some kind of augmentation. In fact, it's very strange when you meet someone who does not is not augmented in any way. Um, 
Yeah, but this is sounding a lot like uh, Deus Ex. It is very. It, 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 this draws inspiration from several very obvious places. Blade Runner, Deus Ex, uh, kind of being the two oh my God. main Bruce ones. Bruce What doesn't anymore? Go ahead. Yeah, true. Fair enough. Uh, but... What I wasn't expecting, I, when you when you find this body, you kind of go into this like detective mode. But it was like what I liked about it was that you go in, you go into the room, and you realize you have to figure out, you have to find clues that kind of point you in the, in the right direction, right? But the game doesn't really guide you in any way. It doesn't tell you to do this, or it doesn't tell you to do that. It doesn't even tell you like when you found all the clues or whatever. It doesn't even tell you. Good luck. You've checked all the boxes. You can proceed now. It's just kind of mm. like when you're satisfied with your investigation, you can kind of move on. Hmm. Um, which was which was very, very refreshing. But essentially, the way you you explore the environment, you have two different modes with, that are activated by activated by the bumpers. The right bumper turns on a uh, like an electromagnetic kind of scan, so it looks for like electronic devices and stuff, sure. which you can scan to find out more about them. Uh, the left bumper turns on like a biomatter scanner, so it looks for blood and you know DNA and that kind of stuff. And you can kind of switch back and forth between those to kind of investigate these crime scenes. Um, but there's not anything that's like nothing's glowing or nothing's like, like here look at this or you know this is the kind of stuff you should look for in the environment. I just kind of like stumbled into it and like did it naturally, which felt really cool. Um, and there was there, like for instance, this you asked about the reading, Brad. You don't have to read anything, but like, like do you want to solve the case? You should. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You should. Uh, like so, like, I'm not gonna be able to progress. There, if I don't well. At the, the very first like the very first crime scene you come across it's like hey there's this keypad here and there, i don't know what the code it's like a four digit keypad you can hack into it but it doesn't always decipher all the numbers so it, it kind of like it, it tells you two of the numbers but the other two it doesn't quite know so you're like hmm what's the code mm-hmm. and there's nothing like i said there's nothing in the environment that's calling your attention or whatever so you can kind of look around but before i had even looked at this this keypad i had like gone through his bookshelf and i had read his emails and stuff and i found i remember like coming across like three or four different numbers that were associated with like dates and things that that had these numbers that I was seeing on, on the computer. So I was like, oh, I wonder if it's this. And I and like I tried several of them and then finally got the right one and it unlocked uh, it, some additional information that kind of l- allowed me to deduce that I was kind of done here and I can move move on. Okay. And it felt very organic, felt very natural, which was really cool. But the more I started to play this game, I started to I started to it started to kind of morph into something more akin to amnesia or uh, layers of fear because as as you go you start you start hacking into people's brains more often you, and 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 those are fucking those scenarios in and of themselves are super fucking trippy what like is, do you have any footage of the hacking i think i might i think i might have some yeah i think right here is um, where my, like you can hack you can actually in this in this universe like can you hack into his you penis? can hack into corpses but it's illegal <gasps> so Ooh. he's like so he can be like, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna do this because I'm desperate to find my son. So I'm gonna do this, and he like hacks one of the corpses. And when he does, like, it's all like fucked it's up all and like degraded, super and shit. fucked up. Like, and like, it starts to fuck with your perception of reality. And like, you, it'll be one of the situations where you are like, am I like, Ooh. is this the real world or am I in his brain anymore? Like the of Black Mirror. Ooh. Yeah, a little bit, but like, it starts to get really fucked up. Like, you walk into a room, be like, huh. Uh, I, there's nothing here. And then you turn around, and the door you just walked through is gone. Hmm. And you're in a room with no Ooh. door, and you're like, what That's the fuck? And food. then you turn around, and then it's like a hallway, and you're like, what the fuck? And it does all these things very seamlessly. It's very cool. It, but it fucks with your head in very much the same way that something like uh, Layers of Fear or Amnesia you're, did. You're making me very erect. But <laughs> is this game... I mean, is it like... Is it like atmospherically oh, bu- spooky? Yes. Or is it like jump scares, pootie pie shit? Uh... It is. It gets progressively spookier, but there are definitely scenarios that I think are pootie pie fodder. Um, there's you, not really enemies to per, per se, but there are. You, there is. There was one like brain that I hacked into that was actually uh, like there was a thing kind of stalking me, and that was creepy. Uh, but that's not really. That doesn't really exemplify like what the whole game is. It's just. It's kind of. Huh? Could I play uh, this game? Yeah, probably. I mean, I. Oh, by the way, the main this character dude. in this game is played by Rutger Hauer. What's his name? Oh, that's awesome. But what's yeah. his, what's the character's name? Uh, it's. I can't pronounce it. It's like it's one of those names where I kind of have to. Cole Black. It's definitely not Cole Black. I can tell <laughs> I'm you. I'm pretty that. sure it was David S. Pumpkins. If someone, Char- if someone could look that up, that would be great. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. It it's been David a couple of days since I played this. Um. 
But what was I gonna say? So after I moved on beyond the investigation, like another big part of it is so that, that you can kind of explore this whole apartment complex. It's kind of open, but like you, I started canvassing the building. So you like actually go and talk to neighbors, and you knock on their door, and they have little, they have little. It's kind of like you know when you knock on someone's door and they have like a. TV there. Yeah, a little video talk, screen. Yeah. You can talk. So to you them talk there. to them through there, and there's, di creepy. there's dialogue choices, and you and you and you talk to the neighbors. Sometimes, sometimes they'll tell you to fuck off, and sometimes you'll be able to ask them questions. And if you ask the wrong question, they'll kind of shut down. And then can you pretend to be like a Jehovah's Witness? No, cool. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but the more I'm playing of it, the more it's 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 it feels like it's getting a little bit farther away from the, the detective stuff that I was hoping for, and it's leaning more towards like more of what they're they're known for which is the horror aspect of it mm -hmm. but all that stuff is really cool and i'm really i'm really engaged by it and i'm definitely going to keep playing this um but man it it scratched all the right itches as far as like the detective stuff at the beginning i kind of wish it w the the detective stuff got a little more involved because it certainly seemed like they were setting it up to be that that was kind of the focus but now it's starting to shift more towards focusing on the horror aspect. Hmm. So the the detective stuff might ultimately be a little thinner than I was thinking it might be. But who knows? That could change. This is good. Yeah, I think it's I think it's great. I, I as far as I'm I'm more engaged and involved by th with this than I was with Layers of Fear. Whoa. And I think Layers of Fear was 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 honestly great um, for what it was. But this is definitely a whole another step, whole new level for them. It, it's it feels like more of a game it's more involved there's it's not just a walking simulator there's definitely more to do and, and figure out and b because you can explore this whole world whenever you want you can go anywhere you want at any time it's it it's it's just a whole it's just a whole another level for them so hmm. do recommend it it's called observer it came out earlier this week i'm gonna hopefully finish it over the weekend but yes crispy i think you should absolutely maybe play this game man fuck you i'll share you it with know you me I'll Do it. God damn it, Brad. <laughs> Do it. Share it with me on Steam. I will. Anyways, uh, that's Observer. Where are we going from there? Mm. There's other stuff. Uh, who played Agents of Mayhem? Was that Brad? That's me. I mean, I could talk about that now, but I'm uh, happy to let them go. Nolan. What up? I saw you played a game that I've also played, mm -hmm. but I want to hear what you have to say about it. So, PUBG. No! That's not what I was saying! <laughs> um, PUBG? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, Rhyme. I played some Rhyme. Uh, That's weird. I just feel like you just started that with no rhyme or reason. Ah. He's finger. It, it was on sale. <laughs> uh, okay. In that case, you I did got have it a rhyme for, for and a reason. I got it for sixteen dollars. Huh. Uh, which is a pretty good deal. On Steam? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, and so anyway, uh, Rhyme, a puzzle game. I like those. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm usually pretty good at them. I like solving puzzles. I, I like, I like puzzle games because you get that constant sense of progression and like success. You're like, ah, yeah, I solved it, got it. Yes, good. And there are some, there are some fairly obscure, yeah, there, puzzles in this game. Uh, I mean, there are actually a few points where I was like, is this a puzzle or am I just dumb? I, I haven't gotten any <laughs> obscure puzzles. I was dumb. <laughs> I've, I've pretty much solved all of them right away. I remember. Of course I, like, you did. Well, no, there was a couple where they were like. Nick this took like 20 minutes to do this. Look at this kid. There, uh, there was that one. You've already passed it, I think. And, but it's the part where you you come out of the, uh, you come up these stairs and you're on a beach. Mm -hmm. And there's like a thing off in the distance. Mm -hmm. And it was like, can I, it's like, but if you walk out of the shadow, that bird will attack you or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I sat there like, what the fuck do I do? I can't get to the cave from here because the bird will attack me. And then after about 15 minutes of being like, what the fuck? What I was like, oh, I can swim. And I swim out, out out in the water and dove underwater. I was like, oh, there's a whole other world down here. Yep. Fuck me. Yep. Yeah, that's the kind of shit I was just What dumb. were you asking, Brad? No. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so it's, it's, it's very... Uh, not very story heavy. It's, it's, it's pretty obscure. You see these random murals that kind of try and give you a little bit of story beats and it's more of just you kind I of I will exploring. tell you this it starts to become a little more clear towards the end that's what, what they're trying to say um so but anyway the the whole thing with this game is just yeah you're on an island you don't know what's going on and so I, I think similar to the witness I think it does a very good job of kind of teaching you how to do a puzzle yeah uh, I think you know one of the earlier ones were uh, you had there was like a boar you had to get past and and there oh, was I some like some fruit near uh, a fruit tree, and if you pluck a piece of fruit, like a boar runs up and he gets all excited. It's oh maybe the boar like fruit, so you get a fruit and you throw it, and the boar gets distracted. Blah blah blah. Do boars eat fruit? Yeah, why not? 
Bo uh, boars will eat not anything, eat Brad. Anything. Boars will eat anything. That's why they're such ecological disasters. Exactly. Haven't you seen Hannibal? They will eat anything. Um, and so let, let me let me let, let me just start off right away and say this game is a horrible PC port. Oh really? Oh, it shit. runs like this is like if you can't tell it's not smooth at all. Like yeah. it chugs. Like I have it. I told it to do like sixty frames a second, and it's like maybe hitting like forty five. And I know it's not my PC. And anyone out there knows like a better way to optimize this game, I would love to hear it. Because yeah, it is very uh, unfortunate. You can play it on PS4. Mm -hmm, yeah. The game <laughs> is beautiful, uh, but just like it just is not a great PC port. Um or maybe Jesus I'm doing Christ is chugging right here, or is that just yeah. the footage? No, I can't do it. No, it's it's the game, not oh, the footage. God. Um so much just looks like eco but better. You watch yourself. <laughs> Did you say um, eco but better? That's bold. Yeah, that's what they say. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, the elephant. Yeah, who's what that guy? Know? Yeah, I know. Oh, right, that's what a oh. doof. <laughs> uh, we know Chris Davis. Thank you. We have eyes. Uh, music is a really high point, though. It has a very good soundtrack. I, I've kind of been enjoying it, uh, especially because you know, the little boy, he didn't talk or anything. It's somewhere to kind of uh, like eco or you know. Uh, it's very subtle. What was that? That was that new game from him, the bad one. What? The last, the last guardian. guardian that one. Yeah, that bad. Uh, game. Yeah, it was like I'm that. not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna justify that with a response, <laughs> Nolan. Like, well, like you really can run around. Game. And one of my favorite things is shouting at lanterns, because uh, when you shout at them, they get brighter. And so I just say, like, as soon as I found that, you get an achievement for doing it to a bunch of them. That's a box quote. Yeah. One of my favorite things is shouting at lanterns, which you yeah, actually do a lot of in this yeah, game. Yeah, you do. So a yeah, lot your, of your voice shouting. plays a lot, a big role in puzzles. Uh, but one of my favorite things is when you're running around and you tap it and there's nothing for him to shout at, and he'll just kind of start like humming. He'll like hum kind of, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like hum a little bit. And I, I, I like it. It's kind of, you know, hum what else jingle. would a child be doing running around an island? And it's a lot of uh, like perspective, you know, comes into play similar to the witness. Like certain puzzles, you kind of have to be literally looking at things at the correct angle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it. It's it's fun so far. Uh, I don't think I've had too many like big challenges. Uh, I think the area you're coming up on next is is easily the most challenging of the, the one after of, this entire yeah. area. Okay. Yeah, it's and it's pretty. It, it takes the the puzzle element of the game and kind of makes it more challenging. Cool. I'm glad. So. I'm I'm ready for it to become more challenging. Uh, I'm not saying it's been like too easy or anything. I've still been enjoying what I've been playing. Um, I, I, I guess the only thing is uh, I've heard it's a little bit on the shorter side, um, and yeah, I, I know like there's, there's a lot of hidden things in the game that you can find, little like uh, puzzle pieces and little statues and stuff like that. And I thought like maybe they did something, but I don't know. It might just uh, be... they don't do something? Yeah, it, it seems like it's just they're there to collect. They don't they don't do something, but I will say when this when what they're trying to tell with the story becomes more clear, mm -hmm. they have a significance. I see. I, I don't feel like I'm probably going to spend too much time trying to find them all. No, that's not. Uh, a I lot mean, if of you them find, are, even if you find like, you know, half of them, I think you'll get the effect. Okay, cool. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I don't really know what else to say about rhyme. Um, Keep going. The puzzle place. The that, puzzle place. That's exactly We're it. We're going to. Um, I, w I will note though, on the night that I played this, I also did play a little more Pikmin. Uh, I'm fairly close to the end of yeah. the, of Hey Pikmin. Uh, I, I think, I don't know, maybe it'll throw me for a loop and there'll be like a lot more. You know, maybe it's one of those things one where those. It, it's like Nintendo near, where you, where you think you're at the end of it, but you're not. Uh, it's like, nah, fuck you. Knowing Nintendo, probably not the, the case. The Upside Down Garden. Yeah, exactly. Um, before we jump to Agents of Mayhem, to uh, Crispy. Is it Mayhem? Meh? I know we spelled it wrong, but Ma Ma it's still pronounced Mayhem. 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 What did I say? Mayhem. Said mayhem. mayhem. You said Mayhem. I did not say mayhem. No, mayhem is how you're supposed no, to say it. No, it's mayhem. 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 Oh, God, you guys are terrible. Mayhem. Crispy. Yeah? I know you don't have footage of it this week, and I know you want to talk about it more next week, uh, but can you give us just a quick uh, rundown uh, of No Man's Sky? Uh, You've been playing uh, No Man's Sky. Uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot of it, actually, this past week, because this past week launched... Patch 1.3, which is called Atlas Rising, hmm. which was a very kind of widespread overhaul, um, mostly addition, adding adding new content to No Man's Sky. Yeah, sure. You um, mean adding content? Adding more content. They had 1.2. <laughs> 
had also added some stuff as well. Um, I didn't really check that out. So so this is basically everything that has changed since 1.0 mm-hmm. or 1.1, I guess, because it yeah. came out like the same week that the game launched. Um, no Man's Sky is very much more a game now. Hmm. It's really interesting. It 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 actually doesn't. I I mean I've been playing. This week alone, probably, I would say, somewhere in the neighborhood of, like, I don't know, 10 or 12 hours. Yeah. That's pretty um, good chunk. Yeah. That's more than and, I ever played of the about, game when I first bought it. That, that That's maybe a little bit more, maybe about as much as I played the first time, right when, like, the fatigue kicked in of, the of, of like, why am I collecting these resources to build more resources to just keep wandering around aimlessly you know? yeah and that's when i, I stop that, playing i think that's when most people stop playing that's when i stopped playing it, it sucks because that fatigue set in super fast it did it did because there wasn't much of a direction to it it was all just like go towards the center of the galaxy or don't and, and yeah. this this uh this illustrates a really interesting um very important point in game design. And, and this is something that I, I've kind of been like researching myself a little bit, like with D and D coming at it from the D and D side. Cause like I've been, you know, designing campaigns for my group to play and everything like that. Sure. And, and like the one big advice that like I keep getting from people who are from, from writers and from DMS is, is like, you need to give your players a good verb. You know, you need to give them a good verb. They need to have, they need to have a very con- a clear, concise idea of what it is they should do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, of, of what, or at least to progress some sort of, you know, sure. forward art. Yeah. And it's not like, like even like telling <clears throat> telling players to like investigate or to explore are not good verbs because they're doesn't, awfully vague. It doesn't mean anything specific. It's very like, are you? Yeah. Like, do you? If if you were like coming at it from a D&D point of view, like if, 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 if you had a party of characters that was going to investigate something, well, what the fuck does that mean? They're not investigators for real. They don't really know what the process would be. Like instead, you know, you would tell them like, oh, you should maybe next go talk to this person or you should go look at this thing. You know, it's something yeah. very concise. Give them a good direct verb. And, and 1.3 for No Man's Sky has added in very good concise Verbs. Turn off so, the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Crispy. That's I, I'm, I'm fucking that's, 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 that's all. That's all I got. No. Okay, no. Okay. Seriously. Fine. So, it so there, actually, there, there, there are actually like several different quest lines now. Yeah. There are main quest lines. So, so you have the game hasn't really changed that much in a broad like kind of thesis. Mm-hmm. view like it is still very much what it always was explore make your way towards the center of the galaxy or don't you know d- do things how you want to do them at your own pace you yeah. do you? um but now they also have this quest line that you can follow that kind of gives you a little bit more direction which has honestly been keeping me going because it's been pretty interesting one of the new additions is this quest line called atlas rises and it starts when you encounter an npc usually somewhere around your starting system there will be a crashed ship and yeah. you can find the ship and you you uh you get coordinates for a person named artemis mm. and you start con you start talking to this npc and, and um basically what's happening is they're lost somewhere in the galaxy you don't know where they are they don't know where you are and you two are trying to find each other so so they end up walking, early parts of the quest line end up walking you through a lot of new features of the game. So like building is a big thing now. Mm-hmm. Like you have to build, you have to build equipment. Like one of the first things you have to build is, is like signal boosters around the planet. You have to go to like this planet and build a signal booster, go to a different planet in the same system, build a signal booster. And when you do that, you can like triangulate your position and, and try to locate where you are in correlation to, to Artemis. Yeah. And, and then... That that whole that whole thing of trying to track down this Artemis person kind of gets like really weird and like much more complicated when they are like trying to describe to you where they are. Like you end up getting like a star chart of where they're supposed to be, and you take it around to other NPCs and show them the star chart. Like, hey, where is this? I have no idea like what these stars are, and they're all like, that's not real. 
There's no sky that looks like that. There's yeah. no combination of stars that look like that. So then you like kind of have to like push in deeper to like what the fuck is going on? Where is this person? And, and like all the stuff that Artemis is saying is really cryptic and real like kind of creepy. And they talk about like they talk about like seeds of glass and like darkness and they can't see anything and all this shit. And then you find out that this person went through a stargate. There are stargates now. There have always been. Was that added in like 1.2 or something? They or? they had stargates added into the game, but they didn't do anything. Oh, Nobody that's right. Nobody knew what they were. Now they do something. Now they're a big part of the whole meta. They're a big yeah. part of the game. Um, and you find out that this Artemis person went through stargates. So your goal at a certain point is trying to figure out like the the just trying to figure out the address that they ended up at basically, yeah. and like going into a stargate and trying to trying to do that, but. Um, that also is it, it gets more complicated it, it's really cool and really interesting but like <laughs> it, it has to do with like artemis trying to travel through a stargate and like the whole system like kind of failing and them getting like stuck yeah somewhere like maybe in the stargates or something it's really fucking weird and like really trippy and really cool the 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 philosophies of of no man's sky like like this really kind of heady like exploration of like who am i why am i here what is this all that like is all still there um, the the central like kind of open ended experience mm -hmm. of the game, like like the, the the general thesis that they went into it with, is all still there. So if that stuff wasn't really doing it for you, I don't know if this new stuff is going the thing to. Is, did they fix any of the stuff with like uh, yeah. like the way the ship controls and like like they landing? Did. They that... they've changed a lot about ship combat. So so now you can fly much closer to the surface of a planet. Mm -hmm. um, so that does help. Uh, do you, feel like it, do you feel like you bit? have more actual control over the ship? Oh, yeah. Okay, because before oh, yeah. it felt very like I wasn't really controlling they, the they ship. Overhauled, they overhauled a lot of it. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know I don't know necessarily that I would ever say it was that bad. Uh, there, there were issues where, like, there was a lot of collision issues where, like, you couldn't get really close to a lot of things. Yeah. So that felt really kind of, like, on railsy. And ship combat was really not, like, a thing. Yeah. They've improved that. They've added, like, new weapons and stuff. Um, there's a lot more just kind of, like, random combat that happens now. Like, if you're... Basically, if you're flying around a system and you're not at, like, pulse engine speed, you can get picked up by pirates pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and they've also added a lot of, uh, like I said, base management. It's a thing I'm only just now getting into. Like, in in the game, they've kind of just gotten me to a, to a quest area where they're like, okay, you need to start building a base that you can... You know your your search for Artemis. Uh, you can you can operate out of this base on this planet. Like make a planet your home planet, and then from that point you can teleport back to it whenever you want, yeah. and, and use that as your base of operations for this like investigation. Um, they also added uh, uh, they added um, uh, freighters, like transport freighters. So you used to see them before, like you would see fleets. You would see fleets of them. Yeah. yeah well, I know. Like but I said, I theater. haven't played since the game came out, so I'm kind of like going over everything that's different. I wish you about. Had footage. I, um, I, I do, honest. and I, I'll get some footage later. Um, the the reason why I don't have footage today is because I. <laughs> well, hang on. Let me finish what I was talking about first, and then I'll talk about that because that's another thing that I need to bring up. Um, but like they they have things like freighters, so there's a lot more of like basing options. Yeah. So like now there's actually like you can fly into a freighter, you can talk to the captain, you can buy the freighter, and then that freighter will be yours. So like wherever you are, you can summon it. It'll it'll it, it has a it has a uh, it has a docking bay filled with ships that you own. Yeah. So like you can use it as a garage. It also has a section in the back. Once you buy the ship, you can go in a bulkhead in the back, and it opens up a section that you can build and customize. So it's like a corridor that it starts as like a single room in a corridor, and then you can build off of it and build whatever rooms or facilities you need and use it as like a flying you know fortress base yeah. it's really that fucking sounds cool. cool there's a lot of really really neat things that it didn't really take much for me to get back into it it didn't take m like much of a sense of direction for me to really be able to sink my teeth into it i don't know that that you know your mileage may vary if you really just weren't into it before I don't know that you're. I feel like I just. I feel like I'm kind of more in line with how you felt about it because I really, really, really wanted to like that game, and I was. I feel like it was just. I think just if shy you're, of. If like, you're in that position, if you were like cool and you were into it and like you bought it first I day, love and you're the like, vibe. And you're I like, love man, the, I just the, wish the there was something a little yeah. different about this to to keep me in it. This this is it. Like this so, is really fucking cool. Yeah. And so it might be good that but, that's the case. Yeah. Well, because you know, similar to you know Nick, pre it coming out, 
I was excited. I wasn't as excited as Crispy was, but I liked how it looked. I liked the concept. I liked space. And I will say that the music is fantastic. I listen to it almost on a daily basis. Yeah. I have mm-hmm. a video mm-hmm. game soundtrack. The, a it's epic. Yeah. And, I have it. and it has a great soundtrack. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's just the lack of anything to do in the game is what kept me from it. But it sounds and like they've kind of now given there's you something stuff to do. To do because because that all of that is Atlas Rising is what I was talking about. There's a whole other thing that they added in called the Atlas Path, where like you're going to different systems to find these Atlas stations that look like the diamond thing on the yeah. cover and 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 there's a whole completely different thing that happens if you do that and i've been reading on the boards and they're like oh well do the do the artemis rising quest line first and then do atlas path later so like it, like what i'm looking at as a player is i'm looking at the next several hours maybe even like tens of hours of my time playing this game filled with stuff to do yeah you know what i'm saying so 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 that's really encouraging that's what that's what's keeping me in it um i mean like some of the stuff is really cool like i finally got to mess around with the stargate for the first time yeah and that shit's fucking crazy like that shit is really cool because it works just like stargates from the movie stargate where that's all like fucking symbols and, and um like constellations and to go anywhere you have to know the fucking the the address for that planet you have to know like the 12 symbols to dial it in or or you can just start fucking dialing you can dial random symbols and just like end up wherever the fuck you're gonna go and they're like this is dangerous but you can do it like that's cool it, it, like like really cool shit like that now back to what i was gonna say before the reason why i don't have footage today is because i i really didn't want to play today because last night i was playing and at a certain part in the quest line it glitched and something didn't load properly and i didn't have a save far enough back to basically prevent me from having to restart the whole game so there are some glitches there are some bugs going on that sounds like a beast of a glitch a lot of the a lot of the new ones uh, yeah a lot of the new content does have some like bugginess to it yeah i'm playing on ps4 okay um I, I, I've been reading a lot on both the Steam forums and on Hello Games forums and, and PlayStation forums. Um, and it seems like they're trying to smooth everything out as quick as they can, but that's the only thing I'll say is a real negative right now is that there is there does seem to be a couple stability issues, and I happen to run into one. With that some was dire like, consequences, Yeah, I mean, I wasn't that far into it, and, and like I said, now that the game is structured the way it is, I really don't mind starting over from the beginning because I don't feel like I'm going to be yeah. just aimlessly wandering around like I was before. Um, but, yeah, it's, it, it's a little disconcerting that it's not completely stable. Um, but... Dude, other than that, like if you were really excited about the prospect of No Man's Sky, if, was, if there was something, was. if there was something there before that like was resonating with you, but you just wish that more of the game was better and more of a game, then then definitely go back and check it out now. The Steam review went from being absolutely like Dog shit. shit to like in the past month, it's gone to mostly positive. Wow. It's gone to like. Pretty, That's quite like, the shift. Pretty yeah. positive. Like, it sounds like Hello Games took the uh, like. This is one of those situations where they're like they realize that maybe they didn't deliver. Well, yeah, and well, they, 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 not... they knew. It's not like it was a surprise. I mean, and... it sounds to me like they they kind of delivered Dude, good, what I they mean, wanted to at the beginning, I but they realized that they wasn't in line. Did this. I can't believe they didn't just like abandon this. Project I can't believe they didn't on. take all the fucking shit that people were giving them, all the death threats and everything, and just go fuck it. Like, whatever, yeah. we're going to do well, something else. There's a chance that guys. maybe they actually wanted to make this video again. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but, like I, I, like, I don't know, man. The way people were acting about it before, it's like, I'm... Very hostile. I'm really fucking surprised that you had the patience to spend another year on this to appease people who are being fucking shitheads to you. That's like, true. Hmm? No, they, see, of- they definitely seem committed to... Uh, to fixing the problems that people had with the game, so I'm willing to give another shot. What is that? What, how much does the game even cost now? Because I'll be honest, I did trade it in. Dude, I don't but know. It like, cost a dick couple right weeks now. ago. It was eight bucks at yeah. GameStop. Oh, it's oh, in their like fucking shit. bargain bin. Dude, I'm gonna cost, go. It's bargain bin. It's right gonna now. go. It's gonna go up if people are buying. Well, that's it, because but... so many people traded it in. Yeah. Nick, can I do my quick game before I do? Yeah. And do well, mayhem after the you, break. Yeah. Well, do you, I know you want to talk about as? What's it called, Nick? As Tez. Aztez. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about Aztez. So we'll do the, we'll do Aztez and we'll come we'll do a break and come back. We have a couple more games to Aztez talk about. Aztez is a game I've played. I kind of got sucked into this um, last Friday. 
uh, it's, it's it's more interesting than I guess I, I thought it was going to be. I remember playing like a version of this at E3 like years ago in the indie section of like Sony. Yeah. Now it's out. So like back then it was just kind of a a brawler or it, like a like a like like a game where you just fought dudes like a yeah. side scrolling kind of reminded me of like dishwasher right. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm going to start with some footage of just like dishwashery type shit right. I, um, I'll be fighting some dudes here in a second, and and I'm gonna say I'm this. Waiting patiently, Brad. I'm, I'm gonna say this, like like fighting dudes in this game, and, and this is unfortunate because I hadn't played the game in a week, and like I'm not as good at it now, and it's really deep and it's really complex. Like I I I I, I almost want to go as far as to say like this is some of like the deepest, most satisfying like side scrolling combat that I've ever hmm. seen. Like I, I think I think it it rivals what what like you know Scott Studios does interesting um, um, it's probably even better than that like you have all these different weapon types and you and they are play like completely differently and there's so many ways you can uh, kind of modify your attacks and do like some legitimately cool shit like you have a dagger I'm gonna describe some of the stuff I was doing last week because I wasn't really able to pull it off here maybe describe first what the game act well uh, I I, I kind of want to do that, but, but it, it's kind of a re- reveal. Right now, it, it, it's just like kind of a side-scrolling arena fighter, right? Yeah. I'm just fighting these waves of you dudes. You are quite literally with, in with, an with, arena. With really deep combat, right? And and uh, in like the, the highlight is the actual weapons, the combos, and the cool stuff you can do. Like I have a dagger that lets me kind of teleport and stuff, but it's also like an exploding dagger. Like I can like lift a dude up into the air, do a combo that knocks him into the ground, um, um, then I can throw my exploding dagger down at the ground to pop him back up in the air, teleport down to the ground myself, and then do like a stabbing attack that hits him in the air as he's falling on top of you. Like y- it gets crazy shit. On top of that, you could switch all your weapons up mid combo. And this, the cool thing that it does is when you're in the air and you switch your weapon type, it slows down and kind of like keeps the combo going. Mm-hmm. Just really, really cool shit. And all the weapons, like when you're with the spear, you're like flying around like a bird. But when you have the hammer, you can't really do that. But but you do like really powerful, cool hammer shit. Like like the launcher for the hammer is to like slam it on the ground and, and like behind you and like it like it pops the dude up like because of you know the vibrations or whatever. Yeah. Just really cool, satisfying shit. But it does all this while looking slick. Oh yeah, it has a has a has a has cool, a very a cool like mad worldy type look to it, especially mm-hmm. you know you know juxtaposed with the blood effect, which you it's you like suck cleaner. into summon your like blood gods and stuff. Um, the 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 weird thing about this game, so so this is kind of what I knew about the game when I played it at E3 like like fucking four or five years ago, long ass time ago. Now this game is more than just that. Now it is this arena brawler with like really tight like badass combat. Um, which again, not doing a great display in this footage because I, it's been a week since I have played it. Um, now it's also a civilization game. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, Fuck so you. They, they, they made the campaign this uh, like Civ type game where you're like taking turns and like choosing oh am i going to do this or am i going to do do this or am i going to do this and it's kind of weighing the costs and the benefits because you know like oh if i don't try to prevent this oncoming drought you know it might affect this <laughs> next turn and then you're you're at you're like sending people to like capture cities or in like and then like the ai and then there's like unrest in the cities and you can like quell the unrest or or you know, go do this other thing, or do this other thing that might get you these these items that you need that could help you like later on. And then people start invading, and like, but but all once you go into the gameplay, it's these arena. Man, we're probably not gonna go to uh, Chris Davis. You're just gonna have to manually skip ahead a little bit so I can show a little bit of that. I wanted to show this arena combo first because when you start the campaign, you only have like one weapon, and 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 that's really it. What the um, fuck? But yeah, like like. Like you're like managing cities, you're like increasing the populations and stuff. And I think this aspect is kind of roguelike. You so so you got to really be on your toes because if you die enough in combat, and I think you have like just se- seems like more several combat. lives or whatever. Well, yeah, here because well, I mean, like at its core, it's still a, it's still a two D brawler. It's, like. st- it's still a two D brawler, and that that's kind of like your gameplay interactions. But uh, it's all like in the context of 
of, of this like civilization thing. Like like one of them, I was trying to like quell the plague in the city because I didn't want it to spread to other cities or something. And like the the actual encounter of that is me chasing after these like sickly dudes as they're trying to get away from me. And like Jesus. within a time limit, I'm like trying to kill them all. So so Brutal. it, it, it kind of like ties it, the gameplay. This kind of brawling ties into the into the overall gameplay. I just thought it was really interesting uh, because they turned this game that wasn't maybe enough of a game for this day and age into something that seemed like like a more of a overkill? game for, for sure. I want, I want, well, not overkill. Like it's actually kind of I mean, you know, is, like, is like it, interesting framing is it to do a bunch of cool fights. It, I mean, is that aspect is the meta? I mean, there's more to it than I really thought it was going to be. It's not just like a level select or anything. Yeah. There are systems at play. Um, you know, you're spending your resources. I mean, to... it's like an actual like empire building. Like... Nah, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. No, not at all. Okay. But it's more of just making decisions that impact. Yeah, and you're you spreading right? your kingdom and preventing. You it, know, it's all more just to feed back into the combat. Bro. Well, yeah. or the combat feeds back into this aspect of it in some ways. I, I'm, I'm kind of blazing through this stuff real quick, but um, again, it's it's nowhere near as deep as like a Civ game. No, it's just, no, no, it's just no, a really no. interesting framing. Now, if you don't want to deal with this shit at all because it is kind of like roguelikey, um, you can. Um, I'm kind of fumbling with the interface. You can. They, they have like. Dozens and dozens of these like progressively like harder arena challenges where they start to like really mix up enemy types and stuff. Some and there matters. are a lot of like enemy types. So there's like agents and items and gears and that can it's almost it's almost like playing a board game hmm. more than like a Civ game. Does that make any sense? Uh, like, that's why I mentioned like Gatan. Settlers of Gatan. Yeah, so, something something like that. Like a mix between like settlers and like that settlers. actually seems is that just like pandemic? Is that just a but I'm not playing too? another person. It's just against this like right. difficult like circumstances that make it kind of a roguelike kind of thing. Like is this, was, was this just like a reaction to like they realized their game was just a little too basic? Oh, I mean I don't know. They someone just had this idea, and I've never seen. I'm sure in the like office this. while making the game, they're like, "Hey, let's stop and play board games." Wait oh, a second. Uh, look, look, yeah. how, look how long I keep up in the air here, just by like. Well, you've been doing a. It's not a juggles this entire time, so no, it, it's really satisfying if you like juggles. And you know, as a Tekken fan, I like my juggles so. or Devil May Cry. So, fan. like, this is pretty cool. Uh, He's a juggle, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. You uh, heard it here first. I was kind of like keeping my eye on this one, and then I just got one of those emails where the dev is like, you know, sent out a bunch of emails to yeah. people who are on some like packs list or whatever, and I just got a free code, and that was nice. So, real quick, what is what is it? But I what is happening? What is happening when you do absorb all the blood? Uh, I think it refills your health some, but it also, like, once you fill up a meter, your blood meter, you can summon your god, and you can switch out your gods, depending. You have to unlock, like, various gods and stuff through the campaign, uh, if you're playing the campaign style. If, if you're, uh, if you're playing just the arena challenges, you're just, like, kind of, like, selecting them from a loadout, I'm pretty, For I'm sure. pretty sure. For sure. But, like, really fun, really satisfying, uh... Not a lot of people are playing it or talking about it, but but keep an eye out. I don't know if there's a demo or something, or, for or those, maybe for those go back to watch my broadcast from last Friday. I played a lot of this on the feed. Um, for those listening at home, this is called Aztez. Aztez. Not to be con not to be confused like I did with Aztec. This I like, like discovered like the Z. underworld. I didn't even know what I'm doing. I was just recording footage, and I never did this the first time I played the campaign. But like I'm in some fucking. Wait, underworld. Wait, you already beat the game? No, no, I didn't. I failed horribly. No. Oh. The game can be quite difficult and punishing. Uh, not just from the the combat. What is standpoint. it like XCOM? If you fuck up enough, the game just ends because like everyone dies. Uh, well, your civilization fails. Well, I I took on an invading force that I probably shouldn't have, and it was like I was fighting like a boss that I wasn't ready for, mm. and I just I lost that campaign. Gotcha. So, hmm. yeah. All right, <laughs> Aztez. Aztez. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, when we come back. We have another couple games to talk about. I know the big one being Agents of Mayhem. Brad's played a little bit of that, but I want to also touch on Hellblade again. Just briefly. Um, and then we have some news and all that good stuff. So if you're listening at home, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Uh, yeah. We'll be right back. You said that. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait! Ah! Oh, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah, that was to, horrible, Brad. You, you fucking just it. ruined wait, I'm just it. Hold it right up to the... Oh, I got a good one going. Ah! <laughs> you have a hole in your pants. Oh, yeah, no, it's, uh... Did you fart through that? No, it's like a belt loop broke off. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> That's all going in the video. <laughs> Hey 
Hey, welcome back, Banephiles. Oh, don't bring up conversations we had during the break. I'm, it still hurts. During it still the hurts. Break your back. Thanks, Mel. You're welcome. Room. <laughs> I, Chris, Chris Davis, I'm, I'm injecting my, about PUBG. I'm injecting myself from this podcast. Uh, hey, Brad, you played another new game. Yeah. What's up with this Agents of Mayhem? Mayhem. I'm sorry, Mayhem. What? Agents of Mayhem. Agents of Mayhem. 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 May it's Mayhem. Stop. Stop it. It is mayhem. Mayhem. Mayhem? Mayhem? It's a madhouse. Mayhem? Is the game called Mayhem? Can we talk about the game? Agents of Mayhem? Agents yes, of ma Mayhem. Agents of Mayhem. <laughs> yes, Mayhem. <laughs> mayhem. 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 This is the new game from the Saints Row dudes? A yeah, mayhem? the Saints Row dudes. The Red Faction dudes. The Free Space dudes. Volition is a fucking age-old great studio, damn it. I heard this good. game is not a age-old great game, though. Chris okay. Davis, well, yellow card. Let's talk You've about this. Warned. Because there's a lot of fucking questions as to... Oh, yellow card. What the fuck is this game? Oh my god, this isn't Saints Row. Oh, but, but fucking Volition. Saints Row was like a master class, and... <laughs> what the hell was that fall you just did in this footage? This is like a correspondence course, then? <laughs> so this is the new game from Volition. It's not Saints Row. Nope. No. Suddenly you're playing Assassin's Creed? What's going on? You here? can switch characters. Well, yeah, you, you pick uh, three characters that you can switch between on the fly out of, like, I think a total of 12. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the missions in this game are, like rescuing these characters doing their loyalty missions and stuff and and one of like the the uh, can i say what this game is because a lot of people popping into my channel no, absolutely this game, please going like what the fuck is this game no seriously i don't know what this game is why is this not multiplayer why is this not multiplayer this isn't multiplayer why is this not multiplayer shouldn't this be multiplayer that's like the favorite question about this game because i think when you see all these different characters you know people all since the only video game that people play these days are overwatch <laughs> and fuck? overwatch I guess that when they see a game that has a lot of oh, different PUBG. characters, they think it's Overwatch or something. And, uh, you know, to be fair, the Saints Row games were co-op, and this game has no co-op. So I think that's kind of freaking some people out, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, I didn't play the Saints Row games co-op, and, uh, I mean, it's just an open-world uh, volition game, I guess you could say. But, um, but I guess this one is kind of like a blend. I mean, it's very G.I. Joe. All these different characters. <laughs> It's very what it's in like in like the way the the villains work and stuff. It it feels very GI Joe. That is not a comparison I was expecting. Well, I mean, what were then you again? I don't know if I know game? enough about GI Joe to really see. That's what I'm maybe thinking. Uh, meets GI Joe. Saints Row meets GI Joe meets like Crackdown or something, uh, because you have this big open world city and I and guess what, guys? Hmm? Uh, there are, are things that are very desirable sprinkled around the city that you have to jump around to get. Uh, I think one of the reasons they decided to make this game as opposed to another Saints Row is because after Saints Row 4 and Get Out of Hell, where you're basically just a god yep. or a superhero flying around, uh, I think they wanted to kind of dial it back a little bit. Where did and, you go? And, and this definitely kind of feels cl more closer to like Saints Row the Third, where you still are like uh, leveling up your characters and get like pretty like powerful abilities. Um, you know, you're not flying around and, and the reason it's cool that they have this like uh crackdowny type element is because you you have you know uh li very limited means to get around the city which means uh you have to rely on a lot of kind of looking at the environment figuring out actually doing some platforming to get to these crystals that you really want because you collect 10 of them and you get this ability core crystal which can like dramatically improve like a like a a, a character's core like ability mm -hmm. like like effect and, and, and like certain ways like each each of them has like three different like major modifiers that make getting finding these things very desirable kind of like agility orbs but it's not just that they also have kind of like uh, skill trees and all these gadgets and 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 as they're uh, each character like plays completely differently from one another like so differently that um, you know who you bring with you is is uh, is really going to change kind of the way you you approach you know, your little combat situations. And, and because they have all these different gadgets and because you can, like, respec on the fly, it actually felt like the loadouts feel very, like, kind of Diablo 3, where it's just, you know, fuck it, I'm just going to try this and this and put all my points into this and just see what, what this kind of feels like. And, uh, you know, I mean... The action is kind of very Diablo-y, too, where you're, you're just gunning... 
down like waves and waves of enemies but it's pretty satisfying to do it because the abilities you know seem pretty satisfying and your mayhem abilities which are your like your uh your old what do they call them in ultimates Overwatch? like yeah. your ultimates or whatever um are, are, are really satisfying and it's just it's just fun to kill things in this game uh and, and you know that's that's one thing i would say that's improved over saints row because i never really got like liked killing things in Saints Row. It was it, very... It wasn't satisfying. There was yeah, no satisfaction to no, it. it. Even when just, you had, like, superpowers in yeah. 4, it really wasn't that satisfying. And you were fighting, like, waves and waves of dudes, and it was just kind of a slog. But here, I kind of like, you know, you're switching up your characters, um, you know, and you kind of have to, because, like, when they're alive or their shields are down, they kind of recharge as, you, as you know, you swap them out, and you're playing as a different... Another character. But they, they also have abilities. Like, one character might have a good debuff that another character can, like, take advantage of and stuff. So there's kind of, like, uh, combo uh, combos and stuff with that shit as well. And uh, and uh, one, one of the other aspects that I really like is that every single, like, mission in the game, or every single character has their own uh, dialogue. So, you know, it was impressive in Saints Row that they recorded, like, three different female voices and three different male voices for the main character for the entire game. Now it's like that with, like, 12, 12 different characters. Yeah. And, 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 and what, you're doing these missions, and, and like, the, the not just your own character, but, like, the way the people they're talking to are kind of reacting, have unique dialogue based on just who you have out at any given time. So as you're switching between characters throughout a mission, like the dialogue is changing based on who you're controlling and they they're all like good character. I mean good, you know, Saints Row type characters. Now, now th this game isn't as explicitly uh, goofy as like Saints Row. You're not running around, you know, <laughs> what was the example I used? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, you're not running around like a Borat swimsuit with a dildo sword, you know. Mm -hmm. It's not that kind of humor, but it does have a lot of like the charm uh, that you got from the dialogue in the Saints Row games. And that's the kind of writing that I liked the most from Saints Row, which is kind of just the rapport that these characters built with each other as you spent, like, kind of the game playing them. Like, that stuff, it had a lot of heart. It was really charming, you know? When characters were, like, singing and, and you know, to Biz Marquee with the main character as you're driving around, that shit's just... It made you fall in love with characters that are honestly, at a first glance, or when you first meet them, like, okay, this character's just kind of annoying. Um, but then as you spend time with them and play a few Saints Row games, it's like you wouldn't have it any other way, right? And I think that actually has a lot to do with the writing in these games. And, and you kind of see that aspect of Saints Row's DNA in this game. Yeah. Now, I haven't had like an um, as amazing of a moment you know, as singing with Pierce in a car, but uh, it's it's you know. It's, is the story worth? Uh, well, the, so the story is very this, this kind is of Saturday morning. Uh, instead of GI Joe, I'll just say kind of like Saturday morning cartoon. Like the main boss is Doctor Babylon. He talks a lot. Um, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm watching this on. footage, on. and it's kind of giving me like so crackdown I'm, vibes. I'm like, not in a so yeah. When you're kind of exploring the city, it feels very crackdown because. You're trying to like you know collect all these crystals and stuff. At least I am. You know that's how I play these games. But uh, uh, you know the missions themselves. I mean you're not. There's not these like crazy set PC missions like you see in like Red Dead Redemption or GTA. It's still a volition game. So it's it's got kind of this repetitive mission design, just like a Saints Row game. But it's more satisfying to kill dudes. And there's a lot of stuff to unlock and to customize. So so like. Like, I thought I was really not going to like this game. Remember I talked about this at E3? Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, H is a mayhem. I don't get it. Fuck this game. But, like, I started playing. I redboxed this game. And and it, it it's really addictive. And, it, well, and, 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 the, and the characters and stuff, they kind of start to grow on me. And I, I want to unlock all this shit. So talking about story, like, when, when Chris and I originally played this at E3, what was that, 2016? Was when we originally played it? Um... We actually did play like a, a set piece story mission where it's like I, I think the the bad big bad at least of that mission had kidnapped a I believe she was like a what's the Mika what is that uh, anime that kind of huh Miku what what was it Hatsune Miku Hatsune Miku like a fake kind of like just an all CG kind of like oh yeah yeah a Vocaloid yeah a Vocaloid yeah so in this like it's like not a real person but he kidnapped her like. AI or whatever, and he's trying to marry her, and like the whole mission is you trying to stop the wedding. Yeah, it's very Saints Row. Yeah, no, so it is definitely over the top stuff, but still like fun. But 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 not like kind of the the uh, the uh, the raunchy stuff. Yeah. Saints Row. This uh, this thing that you're trying to destroy or whatever is called a gravity dominator, which has to be a straight up reference to the weather dominator, right? Classic Cobra 
I mean, a lot of references in this plot. game. Also, you can unlock very, different, very different outfits and skins awesome. and stuff for this game. Uh, That's the most exciting thing I've heard about this game so far, <laughs> is a G.I. Joe influence. That's um, great. Uh, I, I'm kind of... fuck. I mean, I... Uh, so there's a lot to see and do in this game, even when it does get a little repetitive, but because you're always kind of leveling up and unlocking, like, you know, it's like you're always getting a new rune, if you will. Classic think Di- Think Diablo 3. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess my... So it, it's it's pretty satisfying. Now, it doesn't, like, run all that well, and it's a little glitchy. It's still a volition game, you Where, know? Where's the... But, uh, but I kind of wish I got it on PC now, but I really didn't think I was going to like it, and guess what? I kind of like it. Well, a lot of people out there aren't liking it, so I'm wondering where they. Uh, well, what, I what, been, are the, what have the reviews? I don't know. Been I honestly like? haven't read any of the reviews, but I, I just know that it's been getting review, kind of mediocre. One but review I reception. read gave it a six. This is not like a AAA game, right? But like, I don't even know if I would describe Volition, Saints Row as a AAA yeah, game. Exactly. This is like like games like the, you're either a AAA game or you're a fucking indie game. And Volition has dared to like make kind of that B tier game, and I kind of miss them. And and no, this is not gonna be anyone's fucking game of the year. But it's could be. spoilers. It could be. Well, but you know, I'm I'm fucking certainly having some fun with it, and it's a shame because I'm pretty sure like no one is buying this goddamn game. This no could be talking about this game. This could sink Volition for all I know, and fucking deep. This silver. could be well, on suck. my top ten games of all time. Okay, but uh, <laughs> the the no, okay. it's just unfortunate because. I gotta be honest with you. If as I'm driving around, look at a lot of the vehicles. This is kind of in a futuristic world. You've only driven the one vehicle, though. No, no, no I'm not talking. That's talk his about my vehicle. vehicle. Yeah, I mean, I, I can drive other vehicles, but they're lame. Oh, I guess you didn't get that. Um, um, if you look closely, you might be hard to tell. Um, a lot of these vehicles remind me of vehicles from Red Faction Gorilla, the ones that were driving around Mars. Um. Like, mm. This guy, this game's not going to be successful. I just know it. But I have ha, have a feeling that that maybe in the, in a world where they would continue with this series, that this would have been what bridges the gap between uh, Saints Row and Red Saints Faction. And Red Faction. <laughs> wow! I could have seen like an Agents of Mayhem on Mars next. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like, like look at the vehicles. They, they like like uh, not my car, but a lot of the vehicles look straight out of yeah. Red Faction Gorilla. Yeah. Like Brad, straight I, out. Brad, I'm just going to say, oh, uh, that seems like a bit of a stretch. No, I'm saying, this is very G.I. <laughs> Joe. The next one could have been Total Recall. <laughs> what? How, that would have cool. been so rad. How prevalent is the Saints Row like reference in this game? I mean, everything's purple. Like, the Florida no, Lee area, uh, it's I very know, Saints. I but I mean, like, are they... There's, like, Johnny Gat is in the game. What? Is he? Like he's a he's a I think you have to pre-order though, but he's one of the, oh. the, the agents. He's, he's one of the agents, you know. And they're a straight up like I haven't unlocked him yet. I haven't done his mission, but he just looks like a Saints uh, gang gang member. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I don't know. It, it's it's cool. Like like this this woman is a very brash, you know, Marine American lady, but she's like has a relationship. She's like I mean it's. I mean, there's like, you know, like no, weird, I don't weird, know because you're not using words. relationships and stuff that they're kind of teasing behind the scenes with the dialogue, and it's all very kind of shippy stuff, like very millennial, but it's kind of charming. Oh, no, oh, use the millennial oh. word. People and their feelings. It's so millennial. No, that's not <laughs> what I mean. I just mean like kind of the way the dialogue is approaching that stuff. Like it's a little too cute. Does that make any sense? Uh, people in chat are saying this game is actually a spinoff of one of the alternate endings in Get Out of Hell. Oh yeah, yeah. And one, well, one of the endings Get Out of Hell, they like recreate Earth or whatever, and this is the version of it. Oh wow! Um, so is something does, so it does have kind of a direct relation to. Well, all Saints of them are, are kind it takes, of related. Well, they've yeah. said it takes place in the Saints Row universe. Yeah, I mean, Old Tor has been a, a thing in every single uh, uh, volition volition game, except maybe Free Space or whatever, but. Um, this chick is so overpowered. It's so rad. Um, That's cool. Well, it looks cool. Um, it's fun, and I, that doesn't mean anything to y'all or anybody in this world. I mean, because, all I can tell like, you, like, people have just been showing up, talking trash about this game, having never even played it. Because Dude, honestly, I was super excited about this game coming out of E3. That's true. That's true. You have been. You have yes. been. But like, that's a fucking rarity, Nolan. Like, Sorry. no one's been talking about this shit. And, and it's like, people have been showing up just because, hey, fucking Volition dared to try to not make Saints Row. Fuck this game. Uh, maybe not hostile. I don't know. But it, it's a... Fight, you're finding things almost like it's a, a Diablo-style game. I don't think it shows well. 
Like, pe people say, this kind of seems boring and repetitive, but unless you're playing it, unless you're building, you know, customizing these characters and stuff, and, and unlocking all this shit, like, sure, it, maybe it's not that satisfying to watch, but it's satisfying to play. I don't know. It's addictive. I, I mean, this is the most compelling case for playing this game I've heard yet, and I actually want to try it now. It might be the only case that it's, it's in Red Box. game. It's at Redbox, guys. I don't guys. think all the reviews are bad, though. I mean, I, no. I, I didn't think I kind of glanced at them, but... Um, I, I don't know. I didn't really. Uh, it, it, I don't think this is as good as, like, Saints Row 2, 3, or 4, or whatever, but I think it, it's, like, a really interesting uh, uh, attempt at a new IP from Volition, and I'm just sad to see I mean, it. it. Seems... Oh, look, there's a lot of verticality. And what I'm doing in most of the Switch, I fall here, and it kind of fucks everything up, but there's a ton of verticality, and you have to really do a lot of platforming with some of the more mobile characters to unlock a lot of these crystals. I just kind of fucked that up early on in the footage, and I'm like, fuck it, let's just go kill some shit. Uh, but, like, impressively designed Such terrible city. footage, Brad. You uh, should have restarted the footage. Uh, impressively designed city in terms of that structure. I'm just kind of in, in a district that doesn't have a lot of the, the taller stuff, I guess. I don't know. And a lot of cool skins. I unlocked like this Vishnu skin for this character who's... By the way, I played this game for like 10 hours before, before I got to uh, a white lady. I'm saying like 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 like. Whoa! I'm, I'm saying like the first. And that upsets you. No, no. <laughs> no, I'm saying that's a great thing. There, there was like an Indian woman. There was like a Hispanic lady. There was an African American lady. There was an Italian woman. And like I like I unlocked all of these female characters before I got to just a white lady. And I'm like, all right, this is like a good thing. And <laughs> is, it, it really impressed me. I don't yeah. know. No, that, no, no. Hey, I agree with you. I think that was so funny. I think it's it's good that they're and that upsets you. <laughs> they finally put a white lady. In I there. mean, especially if they're going for a whole like GI Joe kind of shtick. Like you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get representation out there. That's that's what shit like GI Joe was ostensibly about. Except you know, just kind of with a weird '80s worldview, <laughs> so it wasn't yeah. the most inclusive thing. But yeah. they were trying, you know. Yeah. Cool. That's Agents of Mayhem. You already said, are you, are you going to find a way to keep playing this, or? What no, I mean. Well, that's I mean, the thing. You I, I had Redbox, so. and I could, like, Gamefly now. The problem is, it, you know, it doesn't run the smoothest on PS4, and I have a dope PC, I, I, but I'm not going to buy it on PC. I mean, I, I might not be that confident in it yet, you know? Some yeah. people were saying that the PC port is not good. Yeah, but even a bad PC port is probably better than a bad, I mean, a, a not great PS4 version, right? Could be. Oh, the PS4 is not. Who knows? Well, I mean, the frame rate's kind of rough. But when you think about having to restart the whole game, it's like, do you really want to trade out one bad version for another bad version and have to restart? I think if it was like, one is clearly better than the other, then I don't know. That's neither here nor there. You can figure that out for yourself. Uh, I have two really, really quick mentions I want to uh, to bring up. One, no time. I finished Hellblade. Good job. Sin was Sacrifice. That game, fucking fantastic. I, I, th I think that game gets a lot of flack from some people for being maybe a little repetitive in terms of its combat and stuff. And I, 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 while I'm not going to argue that point, uh, I don't think that's I don't I don't think that was ever the goal. A, a go the goal. I th I feel like the, the combat was more of in there because that's what Ninja's Theory is a studio that does combat. It didn't seem like it was going to be much of a stretch to add that in, and it, and it, and it prevents it from feeling like some kind of walking simulator. But everything else built around that combat... And by the way, I liked the combat quite a bit. Um, but like we said last week, it is kind of simple. Um, but, in it, but it is satisfying. It has, a lot, it has a lot of weight to it, and it feels very responsive, and that stuff is cool. But from start to finish, that game has such a cool narrative and a cool way of telling that character's story. Like it's going to be one of those games that like I don't th I don't see myself forgetting ever. Like it's it is super effective. Um and I think that character is easily one of the best characters of the year so far. What? No, I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> so you finished it. I did. I finished it. It's Fucking so good, and I will say this: Does it get, I, get good towards uh, the end. Yeah, dude. Oh my is, god. Is there like the, the, is the, there a weighty emotional payoff? Yes. Oh my god. I was and getting a little bored playing it. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Are you? But the, here, I, and I think I, 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 I think I played disc, a bunch of it. I did. A, I did the fire path. I did the illusion path. I did some more stuff, and then I got to another find the letters 
door, and I was they like... They do that periodically oh throughout the game, but, like, God. at some point, that becomes... At the very beginning, when you do those two doors, that's a very... I feel like that's a very different part of the game than what comes after those two doors. Okay. Because everything after those two doors is, like, those, that was very much, like, go down these two paths, fight these two bosses to unlock this door and proceed. Everything after that is a much more, like, kind of just a fluid, like, narrative they're telling. And you do... There are some scenarios where, yes, you have to do what you're talking about, the the puzzle, but it's not like... Rooms aren't just filled with puzzles. It it, 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 it becomes... Very much becomes more of, like, a um, trippy, like... I don't want to use the amnesia as a descriptor again, but very much like, is this reality or is this not reality? Like a fever dream. Like a fever. Like the whole game feels like a <laughs> like that episode of Mad Men where Don Draper chokes that lady. Sure. Spoilers. Whoa! Whoa. What the fuck? You guys didn't keep watching Mad Men. Did no, you? I know. No, that show was bad. Yeah, okay. But okay. <laughs> Sorry. To describe I think that was like season five or something. But to describe Hellblade as a fever dream Hopefully is very fun. accurate. And uh, Brett. His- where did you say you stopped? Uh, did you even get past the God of Illusion? Yeah, I did. So where where did you stop? At, at, at the first door with letters on it. After you go, th- <laughs> after you beat both of those. Oh my God! What? I mean, that's that's relatively far. You guys should watch Mad Men. That show's good. No, I have. St- st- <laughs> what do you mean? Oh my God! Uh, it's not like I put it down I feel forever. Like that's I'm I- just not loving it. It, yeah. it, it feels. It feels kind of like a walking simulator to me. All I can tell I you, I want to get in a boat and sail around. <laughs> but you don't. You never do that. I know. I know. I don't. Like that game is so much, like so much of what makes that game amazing, in my opinion, mm-hmm. is strictly coming from its presentation, its character, its story. I know. And everything about the combat you've about that game you've pretty much already experienced. It just kind of iterates on what you've already done. I will say this, I think it has some of the my favorite boss fights of the year so far. There's not many. In fact, there's three or maybe four boss fights in the whole game. You already fought two of them if you've done those two yeah. those two rooms. But especially like there are some incredible sequences in this game where they're trying to represent her internal like mental struggles and they do it in some really obscure unexpected ways. And they use audio design really cool. Like there's there's one area where you're completely trying to find your way through a com- like a, it's like a black void you're completely blind mm-hmm. can't see anything but you're listening to someone's voice and he's like follow my voice and you, you're trying to make your way through this pitch black area Dude, fuck that's that. cool it's cool like, and I it, fuck that. But, this game, but, if, I just but if you're actually if you're actually voice. getting that like that. surround effect you could you actually figure out where to go by actually listening to the direction the voice is coming from, and like, well, sure. there's I mean, even I'm a boss. Sure fight. Designed, there's even but... a boss fight that I think is going to be one of my favorite bosses of the year, where you can literally hear because you can't see the boss until it attacks, and you can literally hear which direction it's going to attack from. Hmm. Which I've never experienced that in a game. Yeah. There's nothing that like flashes or like gives away where he's going to come from, unless you literally just sit and you stop and you listen, and as soon as you hear it, you can kind of figure out which way to dodge, and like. That shit is super cool, and it has a really emotional payoff. I think. I think it's a beautiful story, and it's a happy ending. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I mean, I'm, I'm interested to see where the story goes. I mean, I'm a little less interested in like all the Nordic mythology, Norse mythology. Uh, see, I think that stuff was great. I audio logs that you find around everywhere, but but I, I mean, I do want to see where this. Those story aren't necessary goes. either, but uh, I also think, <laughs> and I tweeted about this. I think this is absolutely the game the Dante's Inferno game that I wanted back when they made Dante's yeah, Inferno. I forgot about that. Like her trip through like her personal like journey into like hell is so much more effective than anything they try so, they like, accomplished. Me Better struggling than a with these, trailers with a Bill Withers song. Me struggling with the occasional like locked Don't. door <laughs> where I have to find the letters is kind of metaphorical. You know, it's like it's like I'm in hell. Yeah, but they do that a lot less frequently. After the beginning of the game. But, like, what is hell? I think it's... The game is about what is hell to her, I guess. I don't fucking... Just play the fucking game. What else did you play, It is so good. God damn it. I'm playing fucking... I'm playing Wolfenstein, the old... The old old blood? order. No, the no, new, the no, new, no, no, the new, the new order, the, the new, new order, the old, the, the old blood, blood, blood order. the old blood, 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 bl
That's but, a really you know what's really weird about the series of Wolfenstein well, games is they like have very title poorly. titles. <laughs> no, like the the one consistent obviously other than Wolfenstein, the the only consistent name naming element Wolfenstein. is new or old. Oh, yeah. That's very fucking strange. It sounds old. To After me. New Colossus comes out, I guarantee you there's going to be yeah, a fucking expansion for this game that's the old something. And remember, I'm gonna remember hate Wolfenstein 2006? What? Well, 2012? 20, 2009. 2009. The Raven Wolfenstein game. 20, the Raven game. 2009. That game was okay. I actually you know, like that game a lot. You always talk about Singularity as like as like the hot Raven shit. You know what? I think that Wolfenstein 2009 was some hot Hey, Raven the only shit. reason I even bothered to give Singularity a chance is because I enjoyed what they did with Wolfenstein 2009. Mm. So Get that beam can? Yeah. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about... Uh, Actually, Chris Davis bought me this game. Do you have to look like down to ago. pick up ammo? Yes. Yes. I, I, everything that you hate about the new the new order is still in effect here. Uh, it's very much more of the new order. Uh, it's very it's very much. It feels like you can tell the budget was a little bit lower because there's not a whole, there's not as much emphasis on like the story. Like the the new the new order actually like had a fucking story and characters and like a plot that kind of unfolded in a in a really cool way this is very much just like the 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 different sections of this game are just threaded together with just fucking shooting as many nazis as you can and like that's pretty much all that's necessary yeah uh still fun still, still great fun to shoot nazis in this game it's relevant uh, yeah it's fun i was i was as like fun as it is relevant i was going <laughs> I was you going, love killing Nazis, huh, Nick? Dude, when I was motherfucking all Have left. you ever considered that there are two sides? To the story? <laughs> oh, God damn it! Stop it. No. Oh my God! When I was getting ready to, just, to broadcast this, I was like, I should tweet this out, but I was like, Oh man, I'm so tempted to do something probably potentially topical and controversial here, but We're so there's no controversy. Um, it's, it's not, not controversial controvers- to talk shit about Nazis. Yeah. I know. <laughs> No. That's the most like human. No, thing but you I can didn't. Do. I, we, we no, what I'm really saying is, when I say controversial, I didn't want to like stoke the fire. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I didn't want to stoke that conversation. Well, you're white, I wanted so to keep my okay. video games <laughs> and my fucking political <laughs> shit separate. So I did. I just avoided no, that mix whole. Them. <laughs> mix them up. God damn. Get them in there. Get them real good. Oh mix. man, but I will tell you this: killing some Nazis is Politics. fucking fun. Uh, How do you kill them with a gun? Guns, Car? guns, not throwing knives. Ooh, yeah, pipes. pipes, man. Oh, the one thing they they added in this in, in in the in the old blood that I think is pretty cool is when you sometimes you open up like a door, you get to like lift the door from the bottom, and they open it. He opens it just far enough, and then he takes his pipe and he shoves it in, like to, to keep it open, right? Yeah. And then you actually have to back up and do like a running slide under the door. And when and you do it, he like pipe. grabs the pipe and pulls it out from under. It's pretty cool. Does, does he have a tiki torch? He does not have tea toys. Not yet. I haven't gotten that far yet. This guy's on fire with it. Oh my god. <sighs> Consider that fire stoked. Mm-hmm. Illinois Nazis. <laughs> All right. Is there any other games we need to talk about? God damn, that was a lot. Uh, so there's some news. I, not a whole lot. I, I mean, there's a few things I wanted to talk about. One that one that I found particularly exciting for me, at least. It looks like they're gonna release. An Okami HD another on PS4. Oh, and X- did that. Another one? No, but like on PS4 and Xbox One. H- well, that, HD. Oh, so it's like the Final it, Fantasy. It was a digital. It was a, it was a digital release on PS3 and what Xbox. What website's logo is going to be in the artwork? For this oh one? God, I forgot about that. That was the Wii version, right? Yeah. Okay. You can listen. see the IGN logo yeah. in the fucking box art. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> I remember. I remember the day we were at GameStop and you pointed that out to me. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you're psyched because I came in. I was like, I gotta show Crispy this. Listen, this I love Okami. They yeah, who doesn't love Okami? I have, I've been I'm waiting so for a chance to play Capcom though. Like Okami. like Capcom, all they do is port and port and port and port. Why even get this version? Because you know they're just gonna do it again. They're gonna do it again. Remember what happened to you with Final Fantasy Ten? You're like, oh fuck yeah, Final Fantasy Ten Ten Two HD. And then like a month later, oh yeah, also on PS4. And you're like, fuck. And then I bought it again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like fuck the like. I don't think we should. I love Okami. If you have PlayStation Plus, you probably got it for free yep. on PS3. I did don't not. Don't support this shit, man. Like, Capcom. I'm sorry, Brad. I'm going to support this shit. <laughs> How many times has Capcom released all of those Resident Evils? Now, now they're... What was... I saw some Where's fucking... Dragon's Dogma Online? No, they're back, 
actually bringing Dragon's Uncle also to PS4. Literally every single thing Capcom has ever done, they release it on every single thing. And it was so funny. I read an article. I was like, oh, after the success of Street Fighter 2 on Switch, Capcom is considering more ports. And it's like, what were they doing before? <laughs> what do you they're, they're, mean? They're and then like a week later, a week later, they announced that Revelations 1 and 2 are coming to the Switch. We got a surprise, okay, everybody. Okay, that's surprising. Let me guess. So is 4, 5, and 6, and 7, and everything fucking else, too, right? We got like, a surprise for oh, you guys. And Code Veronica HD, and, and, and Remake, and Zero HD. I'm sure those are coming to Switch, too, right? And everything else. We that's got, all they do. We but, got a surprise, folks. But not we're, Monster Hunter. We're porting Dino Crisis 3 to the Nintendo Switch. There was a new Monster Hunter trailer the other day that people wouldn't shut up about. Did you watch that? No, I haven't seen it. Dude, yet. after the podcast, because people would not shut up about how dope it looked. Dude, I know it looks dope. It already looked dope. Hey, just so just so everybody knows, I actually skipped Okami on the Wii, and I skipped it on the PS3. So I've skipped two ports of this game. I have never played Okami. And that you should remedy, because Okami is... Well, now it's coming to PS4, so I just might. Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I will tell you this, though. That is a game that I literally expected to be, like, 10 hours long, and then 45 hours later, I was like, yeah. Oh my god, this game is still going. Yeah. Oh, I it's longer though, like, it's, it's longer than most Zeldas. It's, I had a, good, no it's idea. a good game, though. Yeah. I really thought it was, like, a 10-hour game. Yeah, <laughs> everybody does. But it, 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 it just really... looks like that, right? Just Wait, like... hold on. It's a big, giant world. We're done with impressions. Yeah. yeah. This is news. Why the fuck did you not update us on Hollow Knight? You were playing it the other day. Oh, I'm still playing Hollow Knight. How are Thank you, you for the that? update. How many bosses have you fought? <laughs> I uh, I'm really liking it. It it is. I I uh, um. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I, I've, I've gotten to. Uh, I've gotten to the city of tears. Nice. Okay. Which is fucking incredible. But well, you is. talked like, about this last week. I did talk about this last week. Uh, Shut the fuck and, up. And, and then I played a much little bit night. more after that. So I. I uh, oh, I've, I made it into uh, Soul Sanctum. Nice. Or yeah, Soul Sanctum. Yeah, Soul Sanctum. Yeah. Fuck that. Right. Fuck that shit. And I'm trying to right now. I'm trying to get the. The down smash move. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I, you have to get that in Soul Sanctum? Was that? I can't remember. Where I don't I remember. Got it. It I, was a long time I, ago. I, I'm so fucking lost and confused and turned around a lot in this game that a lot of times I'm just doing whatever Smiley Alyssa tells me to do because <laughs> <laughs> she's like beat the fuck out of it. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, dude, the game is really cool. I've, I finally I finally got enough upgrades with like you know I, I've upgraded the nail. Mm -hmm. I've gotten I've gotten a good set of charms. I've got enough slots to equip a couple of them. I've gotten like uh, like I got a charm that lets me do dashing kind of nice yeah unlimitedly. So so, dash, yeah. so now it feels mm -hmm. more like what I want. You know you know how like I don't know for me. I, maybe you guys feel this way, but for me, like the first, you know, four hours of a Metroidvania are terrible. Yeah, and they then usually are. You're just waiting for it to develop into like the good Metroidvania, and then it does, and then you're. But like, that arc is, is part of what makes a Metroidvania I, I, good. I know. I'm, I'm speaking from an emotional place. Oh. Not like I think this is objectively terrible, but like the first four hours, I'm just like fucking like. Oh, what's, what's, I just wanted to get to what's, the good what's part. What's been your you toughest know? boss so far? Wait, wait, just to, to end that thought you were having, Crispy, are you mm. saying that Hollow Knight is not like that for you? No, no it, is. It, it was. It is. Oh, okay. But I've gotten to Until the you get, like, yeah. a double jump, it's pretty, yeah, like, Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how much they withhold from you in the beginning and how, like, how much, how much just getting, like, a second jump or, like, how much being able to dash in the middle of a jump, like... Changes really opens up that yeah. world for you. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it, I mean, it's an even more severe arc than some other metroidvanias that i've played you know like how how much one simple movement ability just like changes completely everything. changes everything yeah have you fought the mantis lords yet no oh i i encountered the mantis lords i went in one time and like died immediately and was just like fuck that and have you fought dung defender i did that was that was probably uh that was actually probably the last major I boss love, i finished i love the dung defender soundtrack his his boss music yeah, is yeah, fucking yeah. amazing no did you buy the soundtrack for this game uh i haven't officially bought it i have it on spotify dude I'll the soundtrack's eventually. so good oh, so yeah, i said I it last week it i'll say it again until i fucking die like this game does a way better job at building like Atmosphere. God tone. damn it! Come it's, on, it's Team Cherry, get most, this game on the fucking then, like, Switch. Most two D platforms. It's it's, it's, it's honestly <laughs> ridiculous how much like charm and atmosphere and 
emotion oh, they cram into this game. Yeah, like, for, for it being a story about like bugs living in a fucking bug city, it's like it feels so epic and important and like emotional yeah. and, and deep, you know? I want to uh, play this game so it, goddamn really, much. It's really, really So good. play it. Play I'm it going to. I want it on the fucking what if Switch. What like shit on the Switch? Then I'll play it. I, I have it on, on like PC Switch. now. So oh, I doubt it. There's, uh, not, there's not a lot to play. Yeah, it's not that I intensive. Know, I remember when I... Because I got it like uh, at launch. And not to mention... There's I, a little bit of hitchiness. Maybe they patched no, all they, that out. they've patched a lot into okay. the game. They've done a lot of updates. Anyways. I'm just glad this finally caught on because I, I feel like when I was like, hey, I'm going to play Hollow Knight... Well, no, Brad. The, the, I remember they, the well, advertising. Brad, right? yeah, Brad like, mentioned well, it, and I was and like, "What the fuck is this?" And I went and I saw it, and I was like, "Oh shit!" And then I bought it like immediately. You know who lack, told me about it? Fucking Carlos. Lack of lack. He's of, like, "Dude, watch this trailer." Yeah. I mean, lack of advertising aside, because that was a huge problem for this game. It's also incredibly dense. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. it, it oh, takes a no. while. It's. It, I mean, but it's overcome. I, but like, it's successful. Man. No, I know, I know. I, I, I could see that it would take people a couple months to like fuck around with this game to be like, oh, wow, there's way more here than it initially looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and you play it and you think it's going to be like a 10 hour game. Oh, dude. It's but like Okami. It, yeah. Dude, I'm already at 12 hours and I feel like I'm nowhere. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it reminds me of Salt and Sanctuary where you think Salt and Sanctuary is just going to be like this kind of slight mm-hmm. game. This, like this a lot idea of others, that but, they mess around with for yeah. a few hours and then that's another like, one that's that's that I feel like from last year. Not enough people played. Dude, I like, I think, I think Hollow Knight has it's the legs to be like a really great franchise. I like, I would would love to see them do a sequel or like them do something else completely like I think like, it, it's up there again I, I stopped playing it like I play, stopped playing a lot of things from this year and I will get back to it but um, I think it, it's up there in terms of quality with like the greats of the genre yeah you know aside from this the is namesakes, one of, this is one of the better Metroid like it's up there with like Guacamelee and, Ori in the Blind Forest Shadow mm-hmm. Complex I would I, I think like this, this is more better. than Ori yeah I was like, like honestly Ori if you, well. you have like you know you have like a Metroid or a Ca- like Castlevania and then you have like Ori yeah. and then I I'm putting Hollow Knight like kind of up there with like like Castlevania like uh, Hollow Knight's fucking fantastic no I I fully intend to play it. I just want. I'm waiting to see if they have any news on the Switch. I know, I know. Soon. And Nick, I don't. I don't blame you. I think this would be a fantastic Dude, game on the Switch. It is amazing. Like once you start getting into the City of Tears, it's amazing how much like, like Bloodborne that whole section of the game feels like. Like it is crazy. Hey Slade, shut up. Let's continue. <laughs> Let's continue. It's it's August. Almost time. Yeah, it is almost time for top ten list. My top ten games of all time. And if these two would get their stuff, yeah. oh, that's synced cool. up. Y'all would get to see it. They're going to do an update that makes Hornet a playable character. It's ready. All right. Cool. We've got to go. I record. Yeah, it's 72 we, we, minutes long. I know. And it's going. coming. Let's, let's it's going. coming. Let's keep All right. Going. More news. Uh, w- more news. This is another one that was kind of big this week. Uh, 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 Hideki Kamiya mm. was talking about oh, Near shit. Automata. Yep. Uh, and the and the mm. impact that Yoko Taro uh, and Near Automata had on Platinum Games. Uh, after release, first of all, do I you remember wanna, the beginning of the I, year? I just want to say, I just want to say, we live in a world now where Near Automata is talked about as if it has a future, like mm. Near as a franchise has a future. That's and I think that is the craziest thing in the Not world. Not just that, but remember at the beginning of the yeah. year when we got the news that Scalebound was canceled and like over half the studio was working on that project, I, it was gloom and doom for me because the way I saw it is like That's Platinum nice. Games, their next project. As a sequel to Near, like this studio is donezo. Like I was seriously, I saw the writing on the wall, and and I was like, there's no way that this studio can survive because this Near game is, is it's a Near game. No one's mm-hmm. gonna buy it. It's not gonna Dude, keep this. It's not gonna keep these lights on. Who so would have successful. expected it, right? Who would have fucking expected that? But like Near was like way more successful than anybody thought. Than Square Enix thought. And then and Square Enix. Yeah. You know, their expectations are already out Huge. of whack. Yeah. But but the fact that like this shit was like like was like what the fuck for them? Like like if people didn't talk about near platinum, it would have been another clover situation. Yeah. You would have had all these talented people with no place to go. And uh, that's so sad. But <laughs> but the, Yo- he was talking about Yoko Taro and Nier actually like saving essentially saving platinum yeah. games mm-hmm. which it's like, sad it's fucking sad to think about it's sad but like it's also, it's also like good. they're kind they're back in a kind of a good spot now uh it seems so not just that but it was also it, and it, to think it, was, it to think it was near that did that no 
Well, yeah, crazy. That was the start of it. I also think that the the PC ports that they started to put out, like of Bayonetta and Vanquish and stuff, I think think that that did really well with them. Yeah, but um, also there's I think they still don't own any of their IP. I read somewhere earlier this week that there's actually talk about depending on the overall ending success of Near Automata, which they should have a pretty good idea of what that is now. Uh, but there's talks about maybe even remastering or remaking the original Nier. Mm. Which... Don't do that. I don't know, man! You can't, there's no making that game look better. No, but like, what if they it's remade it from the ground up just like, but like in the same vein as Nier Automata, but man, they made a I, better game? I, I, I it's a waste think, of time. Make I a think, new game. I think Yoko Taro and Platinum Games working together in the future would be awesome. But yeah. It should be new stuff. No, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm not I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. But, but hey, I mean that that's something that is very possible, right? I mean I now that I mean, who I knows what Yokotaro has on his plate. Now that Kami is basically Dude, saying that Platinum is in there. You know what? I, I, I think I was listening to a podcast or reading an article somewhere where someone was talking about, like, if Metal Gear Solid had a future, and obviously it's not going to be Hideo Kojima, who would be a good fit, fit for, like, continuing that franchise? And someone said Yoko Taro, and I was like, oh, my God. But, like, it's oh so crazy. <laughs> because after Nier came out, uh, 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 Square Enix shuttered Kavia. Like, Yoko Taro's studio was dissolved after near yeah and to think that like he and maybe some of the a few people i mean i don't know what carried over from that team to uh you know near automata i mean i know they got the composer back and and some some of the key people but it's such a weird i wonder if yoko taro does, does yoko situation. taro currently have a home at a studio or is he just brought on to work on this game because he was I mean, he's involved. a square enix employee Oh, is he? Yeah, he's just he's he's like uh, he's just a roaming talent <laughs> within Square Enix yeah, that gets yeah. that they let him out every once you in a blue moon to do something. Like kind of bobbing around yeah. between the cubicles <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. I mean, he's <laughs> probably, they probably got like a team name or some shit at this point, but yeah. I mean, I feel like maybe uh, like you know it did great things for Platinum, but like what if this also kind of put Yoko Taro back on the map to be like, you know, maybe he's gonna get more work now, like more notable work where he's actually like. Leading cool. projects and and that kind of stuff. Like I would love to see what else Yoko Taro can do. Well, hopefully Dude, it's not another Dragon Guard game cool. because those games suck ass. Wait, what? Yeah. Which one? I mean, <laughs> Yoko Taro has not always made good games. It's weird. He kind of reminds me of Swery. Yeah, that's uh, a good. Yeah. Dude. Where, yeah, yeah. Speaking where, of, he uh, he had this one game that kind of put him on the but map. But that's why. Or, that's why. That's oh, why that, a continued that, that's partnership. Uh, that's why like another collaboration between him and Platinum Games would be good because he yeah. brings he brings the crazy. And Platinum Games brings the, the good, the good gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so it's, it's funny you bring up Swery sixty five because he announced a new game this week, which I'm gonna let Chris Davis the trigger good the life. overload. It's good about life. fucking cats. It's a, <laughs> it's what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> this is an RPG about cats, yep. right? Fucking I mean, cats. No. Si what? That's okay. First of all, I'll be honest. I don't know much about this project. Project, yeah, I just wanted to mention it because it's Swery 65. Show us the game. screenshots. You pull up the screenshots, Chris Davis. Okay. Cats. It's about cats. Cats. It's like game is made for Chris it's Davis. It's just about cats. It's a weird Swery game. Do you ever play Spy Fiction? Is there, first of all, is there any such thing as a non-weird Swery yeah, game? That's a good point. Uh, uh, did anyone here play D5? I don't D4. know. No. What is he Sorry, D4. No. Oh, that was him? Yeah. S was D4? Oh, yeah. Okay. I know. I know. George did. Yeah, I did. I never got around to playing. Didn't that Chris Davis? I don't remember. I never played it. Uh, I've always wanted to. Yeah. Uh, it was episodic and it didn't finish. Oh, yeah. I can't. Uh, I heard it was pretty fun with Connect because I was because going like to, you, but like, then uh, it's like my you like you like you like have like flashbacks or something or you like day you like go into dream sequences and the way you do that with the Connect just like oh, I don't know it's weird shit like that. This I don't remember. this <sighs> Swery is like he make he's he's kind of made a name for himself for doing weird ass shit but like I've never heard it, any of his games are like great from like a. We talk about like from an analytical standpoint, like right? Standpoint. They're all just like weird and out there, and that's kind of what makes them special. Mm -hmm. So it's just never really clicked with me. I don't know. Uh, I, mean, I didn't do play remember, Deadly Premonition. Yeah, Wait, was De that De Deadly Premonition? Of course, that's mm -hmm. the one yeah. that got people talking about. Yep. Him. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. didn't know who this guy was. Twin Peaks. Yeah, yeah. The fucking good life. It's a the game about. Cats. There's a trailer, or is that just like a behind the scenes? Behind the scenes, probably. 
Those cat people? Play and mute it. Oh god. Oh god. No. Oh, oh they pulled the video. We'll we'll maybe we'll watch the trailer there's, after the podcast. We do somewhere. need to continue on, the but let's just know this all you really need to know is Swery sixty five is making a game about cats. Cats. And they're probably going to reveal more of it at PAX, right? It's about a seaside town in England in which every yeah, night people, people can't hear you, Chris Davis. That's not how everybody it works. Tur- everybody in England in this town in England turn into cats. At night. Game at about night. cats. They fuck. And they fuck? Like cats. Yeah. Of course. All right. Uh, we actually probably should move on. The, that's kind of it for like the big news topics I wanted. News? There might be one or two others, but yeah. we're running kind of behind mm. tonight. Let's yeah. see what else you got then. Chris Davis. I don't remember what up. I made. Oh, THQ Nordic announced a new horror game, Black Mirror. Yeah. Is it like an iOS game or something? No, shit? no. This is coming to... Like a real-ass game. Real-ass mm-hmm. game. But, but Black Mirror is like a collection of, you know... Different stories. So what are you, is? Are you talking about the the show or the game? This is different. This is not. The, this is not based on the show. This is. Why is co- it called Black Mirror? Because they called it a Black, Black Mirror. The, Can they do that? Why are yeah. you called Brad? Fuck you. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm. My name is not copyright protected, but I'm pretty sure Black Mirror does have some. Well, actually, two words. actually, I can tell you that I. No, from what I from works. what I've gathered. <laughs> Black Mirror was actually like an old French old game franchise that was like a point and click adventure of some kind, and they, this is kind of like a rebirth of that or a re- reboot of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there we go. Carlos yeah. in chat has confirmed it's an old point and click adventure. Uh, that, that, adventure. And this is literally that IP. I think it's they that. Might I, be able I think it's that IP, that but they are rebooting it for something else. And they're actually suing Black Mirror TV show for stealing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea what this game actually is. The trailer that I watched was very vague. Uh, and I don't, it just, it's a horror game, so there's that, but also it's THQ Nordic, and I don't know, it, mm-hmm. it, like, I watched the trailer, and it kind of gave me vibes of, like, kind of like a B-tier, like, budget horror game, so I'm not, obviously, that's, it was a very cinematic trailer, so it's kind of, maybe it's too early to be making those kinds of calls, I want to see more of it, but just know that it's coming out, not to mention, it's coming out November 28th, and we haven't seen gameplay, and they, mm-hmm. it was just announced this what week, What else so. we got, Chris? Davis. Uh, let's see what else. What else? I know Chris Davis that might wanted, be it. No, That's he it. wanted uh. to talk about Planet of the Apes: The Last Frontier, which they. That's they, what I was alluding to earlier uh, in the show. Yeah, they they showed some gameplay of it, and it kind of looks tell telling. Yeah, I don't know decision making. It is supposed to be like a tell, like a point, not point yeah, story click, driven. but a telltale esque story yeah. game. Uh, I don't but really know a whole lot. Andy about Serkis it. is involved. Oh, he uh, is. Yes. Okay. He is involved with that project. Um. Because obviously he's very involved with the movie, and this is supposed to bridge the gap between uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and the War- second and third. Movie. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think Andy Serkis might get a nomination this year, an acting nomination? Maybe. Has, no. Was he not been nominated before? For I don't think so. Wow, that's strange because he's excellent every time he does. You know, Last Planet of the Apes. He was really good in Thirteen Going on Thirty. Uh, that's not a joke. He was really good in that movie. He was Jennifer Garner's boss. Oh, mm. weird. Was he like? Was it like performance capture? Or? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, it was it Jennifer boss was yeah. an ape, like <laughs> an orc <laughs> or something. Her boss was a she gorilla. She worked at a zoo yeah. with talking yeah. gorillas. Uh, so yeah, it, that's uh, there was a there's a trailer out there for that, and that's kind of a thi- that's a thing that's happening. I don't know. And you know what feels weird to me? I don't. I feel like it's been a long time since we've seen like a straight up fucking like licensed game and that's kind of yeah what this is right it is yeah it is um like it is supposed to be directly related to the movies so yeah. i don't know it's been a while since i've had to think about the the whole like licensed movie curse mm-hmm. kind of thing so i don't know how this is going to turn out but andy circus is involved and uh, i think the last game he was in i loved <gasps> it's Enslaved. Yeah. Okay. That was, that was the last. I was one. trying to think I, that was the I last one. I don't know if he's been in anything else. But. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm willing to give it. A, I mean, the thing is, I've been pleasantly surprised by those movies. So, yeah. and I think they pre- they present a lot of like moral questions that would make for a good Telltale esque game. I think. I think. And I think in the game, you're actually supposed to play both a character, both, sides. both an ape and a human, and and then like, they meet, and then they fuck. Or fight, or something. I don't both. know. Or both. Um, so yeah, that's it for news. Let's move on to uh, this. Is the show has been running a little bit long, so that's let's go ahead and cut straight into. Is the show running long, or do we have too long of a conversation about Batman? 
Arkham Rise. What's it called? <laughs> The Dark Knight Rises. Why are you pointing at me? That wasn't my fault. No, I mean, I was doing one of these. It's time for the community. (laughs) (laughs) That's quality. (laughs) All right, Nolan. Take us into our questions, our Patreon questions for the week. We have a new patron. Oh, shit. Zero Skies, who is also in chat. Oh my god. Okay, you're not going to do the whole thing. In this. Yeah, please Zero don't. Skies. <laughs> no, god. Thank you. It, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Zero Skies, for supporting us on Patreon and for watching us live. Hello, he's saying hi. Wave to him. Hi. Hi, Zero Skies. He's, he's watching. This week no, is from please. I'm, I'm putting the kibosh on this right now. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> god damn it. What game? No! Have you wanted to try but didn't because the game's overzealous fan base bothered you so much? Sonic. It actually pushed you away from trying it. Ah, Nirvana. I never listened to Nirvana when I was in high school. Overwatch. We're talking about games. You may not have caught that because it was hard to understand Nolan when he was talking with the mask on. Kenton mentioned, like, Pub PUBG for Brad. PUBG. No, He's, it's just because it's fucking multi. It's a, I would play Overwatch. I would play PUBG. I don't play multiplayer shit. I hated the fan base of Undertale, but I still played it and liked it. I just don't play multiplayer games. People get offended that I don't play multiplayer games. It's so weird. Undertale was one for me. Yeah. Undertale would be a good uh, one. Early on, like, as everyone loved it so much, I was like, fuck you. Uh, I did play and I did like it. I think people who loved it loved it too much, but it was a good game. Yeah, real good. I liked it a lot. Um, oh man! Game. I mean, oh, there are yeah, there base. are a lot of multiplayer. I feel like games it's easier for me to. I feel it's easier for me to associate fan bases with things like TV shows and movies than it is from games sometimes, mm-hmm. or at least at least ones that like turn me off to actually playing. I, like yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like of of all of my media consumption, games are like the things that I'm least concerned about. <laughs> Being trashy with, I guess. Yeah. So I've tried a whole bunch of stuff that's like I'm always this is to toxic it. and horrible. Like yeah. I tried League of Legends and I just don't like the game. Yeah. You know? I, well, I tried you know PUBG and I just don't like the fucking <gasps> Alright. Well let's move on. Next question this week <laughs> the from T-Bag. Gonzo that's Lude. A good question. Yeah, if I think of something, I'll I'm bring it up. I'm trying to think but... of a good one. Yeah. A Sonic well, is actually a good Sonic's answer, but I'm yeah. trying, guys. I played a bunch of Sonic when I was a kid, but I never got I'm it trying. Anymore. Sonic. Uh, okay. Maybe. Try. Uh, all right. Uh, so let's just move on. Y'all can still think of other answers for later. From Gonzo Lude, what is your favorite fantasy novel or book series? Bonus points if you don't answer Lord of the Rings or Song of Ice and Fire. Okay. <laughs> Witcher. It's so it's so fucking easy. <laughs> Witcher. Fucking <laughs> Harry Potter, man. Oh, but that's not, that's like in the even, in the spirit of the question. Yeah. I'm sure you can lump that in with a Song of Ice and Fire. I don't even care. And Lord of the Rings. I don't even care. He didn't mention it. I'm saying it. It's my favorite book series. Period. He said fantasy. Not he said fantasy. That is not fantasy. Ma- m- magician bullshit. Over <laughs> <laughs> the fuck. Harry oh, Potter grow up, Brad. That's more fiction. Great. You're right. Harry Potter's not fantasy. That's more sci-fi <laughs> than fantasy. <laughs> There's, no fucking, it's there's not a single sword in Harry Potter. Non-fiction. The Actually, sword of there Gryffindor. is a fucking sword the in The sword Harry of Gryffindor! Oh, <laughs> thank you, Crispy, thank you. I was so angry I couldn't even get there's it out. There's not a single fucking dragon. Uh, there are many dragons! There's more dragons in Harry Potter than there are in the Song of Does anybody Potter? throw a fireball? Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> Is there a single pointy hat? Yes. Okay, now there's you're, a really no, there famous is. one. The now sorting hat. Now you're just fucking with me, right? <laughs> yes, right? he's trying to. An elf. Is there an elf? Oh That's my god! Yep. Fuck you. Yep. Those are little goblins, okay? Those no! Are elves. They're house, house elves. elves! They're called elves! Yes, there are house elves. <laughs> you're fucking killing me, Brad. Okay. Harry Question. Potter is one I can't get into because the fan base is gross. Ah, Lord of fuck the you. So sorry. Ga- uh, Game of Thrones. Are those technically dragons or are they wyverns? Uh, well, don't dragons? dragons have four legs and wings? But they call them dragons, so they're I dragons mean, in that universe. I mean, you know, since none of them fucking exist, I think they're dragons. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, That's a good curious. answer. I, I like I like that answer. I can't wait till we get to the end of the book series and the dragons are still real small. Guys, guys, yeah. guys yeah, real, real quick way. aside, yeah. I was at my parents' house earlier today, right? And my mom, I had talked to my mom like a week ago about like, I have a bookshelf that I put in my office, but I don't have it. I haven't been reading lately, so I don't have a lot of books to put on my bookshelf. She's like, oh, just, I have some of your old books. I'll give them to you next time I'm at your house. I was like, okay. So I show up at my house today, right? And she's like, I got all your Harry Potter books here. I was like, great. I'm actually thinking about rereading them, right? I opened the box. And I got, a, I had them all hardcover, right? Mm-hmm. She took off all the sleeve covers. <gasps> she ruined them, yeah. bitch. Pointless. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're all gone. They have no I art. Say, like the box was just filled. They with have porn. no art. 
It, yeah. Oh my! It's yeah. just like the the plain colors. Yeah, just the There's plain a solid yeah. color. Picture. I was like, "What did yeah. you do that?" She's like, "She's like, I was using You're them to like stack like book pl- collector like, now? No, like I was. She was using them to stack like display like vases and stuff on top. But she, she, she didn't want the art on, it, so she took them out of the sleeves, wow. nice. threw them away. <sighs> uh, Killed me inside. Growing up, one I always liked was Ender's Game. I was a big fan of that one when I was growing up. It's a good one. When I was growing up, it was all about goosebumps. That's not oh. fantasy. I never read fantasy. I'm missing the whole fantasy Period. thing I know, here. I know Ender's Game is more sci-fi than fantasy. I, read, I didn't read a whole lot of fantasy <laughs> growing yeah. up. Uh, I don't know if this counts. Kind of. I mean, it's definitely kind of sci-fi, but it's fantasy. also really out there fantasy. But I was really into... Uh, like the Wrinkle in Time series, mm. like Wrinkle in Time. Yeah. See the, the new door one, the trailer for the movie. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. It's kind of weird, but uh, this, this question would be easier if it was sci-fi. Yeah, fantasy. I mean, really good fantasy series. Witcher. Other than that, actually, I've been reading a fantasy series called the Ratcatcher series. That's really good. It's but you can only get it on Amazon. There, 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 so there was a series I did read when I was growing up uh, called. It started. It was a book series called. It started with Jaharig Jer, or Jerig or something. Dragonlance. Uh, exactly. Sure. Uh, by uh, S- Stephen uh, Bosch or something or I can't remember his last name. Uh, uh, yeah, it was this whole oh, se- and Discworld. This world's good. It was this whole series that kind of followed this this group of people, and it's like in the future, or, and there are all these races, and humans are actually kind of like lower on like the chain of, of, of other races, and he's like looked down upon, but he can actually like do magic, which like most humans can't, which is kind of weird, and he becomes like an like like a bounty hunter, like assassin, and it's actually pretty cool. And he has this like dragon familiar that he can like speak to telepathically, and he can like teleport, and it's kind of cool. What's this called? It's not the not the best. I, I, it's a it's like. How, uh, I'm trying to remember. I've read like five of the books in the series. It starts the the first book is Jaharig. It's J H E R G or something like that. Um, I don't know. I have them all in the other room. Like oh. I have them all over there. Uh, I can show you after the show. But anyway, uh, that was one I kind of read when I was growing up. Uh, yeah, J fifty two. What he's talking about, the writer of Mercenaries One, is Matt Colville. He's that D and D guy I always talk yeah. about. He wrote a fantasy series called the Ratcatcher series. Ah. There's like there's two books out right now. There's one called Priest. There's one called Thief. The next one coming Aragon. out I think is called Fighter or something like that. And those are really good. Uh, the author's uh, Stephen Bruce, uh, and a J- Jerig is the fantasy novel that starts with Vlad Taltosh is like the main character. Anyone Started ever, in eighty three. Wow. Does anyone ever read the Dragon Riders of Pern? No. The that? Dragon Riders Perm. The Dragon Mists. Riders of Pern. It was like it was about dragons, but it took place on an alien planet. The Mists of Avalon. Cool. We All right, should we probably move on. on. Uh, f- uh, question from Zero Skies, our new patron. Uh, what game would be made more fun and intriguing if you played from the villain side of the story? Ooh. Would the game's mechanism uh, mechanics be different? Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh, man. He plays Wygrav. Hell, plays Delita. Fuck it. I was just thinking about this Planet of the Apes games, and if you play as the apes, aren't you technically the villains? Wait, no. No, the humans humans are the villains. Well, I guess it depends on But it's our planet. Yeah, the apes are taking over our planet. Yeah, but they paint the humans as the villains. Yeah, but Woody Harrelson's kind of a dick, so they're bad guys. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of? Also, nah, never mind. Uh, Uh, Oh, man. Play as the bad guy. Ooh. That's a good question. How about any Transformers game? Although you often do play as the Decepticons. <laughs> what, so you transform um, hmm. into a jet instead of a car? <laughs> Jets are cooler than cars! I have started to think, I was like, actually, there's a lot of, a lot of what games. About, what about, like, like a Hitman game where you're the bad guy? You're, like, <laughs> you're constantly you having to the avoid... Target. Yeah, you're constantly <laughs> having to avoid being spy shot party. by a Hitman. It's like, it's like Spy Party. party. Yeah. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. If it's like you see a waiter acting fishy, you're like, oh, fuck! And he's like, I think that could that could be kind of fun. That game exists? That would be cool. What game, Chris Davis? I don't remember the name, but... Then you're a fucking liar. <laughs> The ship? You lie! Oh, the ship was pretty uh, good. Alien Isolation, you play as the yeah, alien. There's been I plenty like Red Faction Gorilla, you play a building. <laughs> Just try to <laughs> structurally <laughs> maintain that yourself. That works. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of like some of the better... like. Mm. The thing is, like a lot of... You play a lot of... Mass Effect. You play a lot of play characters in games that are he- described as heroes, but like their actions... 
kind of villainous. I don't like, like, mm. like you think about like I don't know. Think of something like fucking. Well, I mean, actually, assassin. Well, they did make an assassin's Creed you play as uh, a Templar instead of an assassin. They did, yeah. Um, I don't know, mm. man. I, I my mind immediately jumped to like Devil May Cry. That was like they made a game where you play as yeah, fucking Virgil as well. Virgil. Um, It'd be cool if they did that for Wonderful 101 where you could like play a whole thing as Prince Forkin. That'd be cool. Yeah, but he just kind of played like... Uh, I know, but Grand Virgil just kind of played like Dante. Grand Theft Auto. Wait a second. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> Never mind. You play the cops in that. I'm yeah. sticking with Final... Oh, Prince, that's good. A Phoenix Wright game where you play the prosecutor? Oh. But they've done that too. They, you played they had the Edgeworth series. Do you, are you actually like... Mm -hmm, you're Edgeworth. So you're trying to frame people or... Yeah, I mean, no, you're trying, I don't trying think to you're prove trying to frame people. I, I, I know, I, yeah. I understand. <laughs> trying to but, prosecute uh, criminals. But, uh, hmm. Oh, Fien uh, 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 oh. Uh, Professor Layton, you're a puzzle. <laughs> just waiting to be... Oh, sad. man. I'm just sticking with Final Fantasy Tactics. If I could play Resident Evil 4, but play as the little, uh, the little dude. You know what I'm talking about? No. Why is it so... The hard? little dude. I know what you're talking about. What's his name? Napoleon. Napoleon. <laughs> Assassin's Creed 3. Where uh, you where you're don't, the you're don't. the story. God no uh, God uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Moving on. All Next right. question. Uh, final question from this evening from Mr. Green Toss. I was trying to I was trying to think of a game that had like really bad controls. I was gonna say like oh that Gun Valkyrie. But you play as the controls. <laughs> Anyway, um, oh, a Zelda game where you're Ganon designing dungeons. That'd be cool. Did Ganon design the dungeons? No, but dude, you know. that would be the perfect yeah. setup for Zelda Maker. Yeah, Ooh, that'd be and, good, and it would yeah. be a thing where like you can't like to make like it dungeon fair, defend, you dungeon, have to complete the dungeon you build, but you want to make it powerful enough that it's gonna beat the computer link. That yeah. that was that. I mean, that's like Dungeon uh, Keeper. Dungeon uh, Keeper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, final question: Since Observer. <laughs> Let's you hack into someone's mind to find out details of their past. Which video game person would you like to hack into and find out more about them, for example? I would love to dig into the twisted mind of Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal and see how messed up he really is. That's... Uh, you, I, I think I know exactly how messed up he yeah, is. Yeah, I, I think I know enough about, <laughs> about mm. that character. I think I know exactly the intellectual depth <laughs> that that character has. I would like to delve into the mind of Haiti. <laughs> Haiti? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, you know. Oh, Haiti. Yeah. I like yeah. to dig into. <laughs> God damn it. Oh. Oh, what about like Batman? Like, you know, oh what, what makes Batman Batman? <laughs> Like why? Why is he the way he is? I can <laughs> tell you why. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Oh my goodness. Uh, what's, a good, what's a good game? Hack into the mind. Yeah. Hack into the mind of. Having mm. seen exactly what happens when you hack into the mind of someone in Observer, like Probably it'd be pretty, fu it'd be pretty fucked up, it. no matter who you hack into. Um, hmm. How about hack into the mind of Mario? Because he never yeah. says anything. He That's never reacts. Sociopath. What is? The, what is he? Yeah, like, like Gordon Freeman style. Like, what yeah. is this man actually <laughs> thinking? Is he even a plumber? Yeah. Does he yeah. have like a certificate? I've never seen any sort of credentials. Yeah. <laughs> He's never even carrying a wrench. Oh, yeah. you never even see his ass crack. Hmm. Well, he does he even suspenders. speak? Really? What does Sonic be thinking about? Chili dogs yeah. <laughs> and chaos gemeralds. What? What? <laughs> chaos gemeralds. I don't think that's what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> gemeralds. He loves the gemeralds. Gemeralds is your like. Xanax gemeralds. That's your like handling balls. Oh, it's more like, oh, more like infinity gold. Oh, sorry. You know, like, oh, like Thanos. Those are actually the, knuckles gemeralds. The, the My bad. <laughs> Little red hairs hanging <laughs> off his gemeralds. <laughs> like, the, like the like the chaos stones. Oh you know, god. The, the infinity stones. Oh, so many miles per hour. Um, what's 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 the deeper story to Cole Black? <laughs> when you're flying as Tells, I don't think there's a way to make him not fly. How does terrible. how does that work? How can his tails rotate? Don't ask fast science fast enough. What about what about Tubi's mind? Does that mean that he has like a like Tubi's a ball mind. joint or something where the no, that it would have to be a lot of revelations there or, early on in that game. Sort of Let's rotary. go with yes. Let's what go with the yes. Fuck. I don't know. Then, yep. I'm That's sticking with uh, Hades butthole. <laughs> <laughs> delve right in well that's all the questions this week thanks to all our patrons for asking every week we'll answer any question you ask clearly 
mostly. Uh, so all you got to do is uh, go to patreon.com slash four player where every week we'll have a post and ask your question. Mm-hmm. All you got to all you got to do is support us with a dollar or more a month and you can ask us questions. We'll answer anything. Mm-hmm. Anything, mostly. 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 Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap up the show with the four player minute. Brad, mm-hmm. would you like to start us off? Would I like to or will I? Start us off. How's that? Okay. I'm telling you. My hype and my sweat are, of course, for my child. <sighs> it's getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Uh, and all the video games I'll get to share with you know him. Uh, my uh, my fuck you goes to the Sega Saturn. Not just the Sega Saturn. It goes to I've been b- trying to burn backups to play on my modded Saturn, and let me tell you. <laughs> they, they tell you in all these forums and stuff, burn the disc as slow as possible. I mean, y'all oh, remember yeah, burning yeah, discs yeah. back in the day. Modern dry, optical drives, they, don't, burn they don't go that slow. The lowest they can do is time 16, and they don't, I mean, I, I can't burn a disc slower than that. So I've been, like, busting out old fucking laptops and shit, trying to burn it slower. But still, the lowest I could find is times 10, and really I should be doing, like, times 4, and I've just been having all these errors and struggling, man. It's been a real, uh, but I, uh, real piece of shit. But I've been gotten some working and, uh, fuck the, fuck, fuck optical drives and CDs. I think I got to get better ones or something. Or older ones. And my thank you for this week, go to Sonic fans for uh, making my life miserable as I try to broadcast this game. Listen. You brought it on yourself. No, I'm just kidding. They're okay. Fuck Sonic. My fuck you for this week goes to Sonic. I hate Sonic. I hate Tails. I hate Knuckles. I'm really glad I, I bought that, that game. for you, I hate Brad. Sega. Oh, but he didn't say he hates Shadow. No, I mean, I played a bunch of it. I plan to try to keep going. Like it's not Shadow. really that bad. It's not that bad. And my hype is for the Evil Within 2. Did I already say a hype? Yeah, my child. Evil Within 2. I can't wait. And uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. Metroid. This is going to be some good games coming out. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm psyched. I'm psyched. Uh, by the way, that Metroid on the DS is actually getting pretty good. Uh, mm-hmm. good pretty what? good. Pretty good. The, the impressions I've people play like <laughs> half an hour of the fucking thing. We'll see. Yeah, I guess we will see. Hopefully, but early impressions have been fairly positive. Nolan, what up? Your turn. No, <laughs> don't. You're not doing the fucking voice. Uh, my hype. Uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy comes out on Tuesday. Yes, it does. I'm pretty excited for that. I know it's not going to be... Ready for some Chloe? Yeah. Chloe and uh, Nadine. Nadine. I know it's not going to be the best game in the world, but I fucking love Uncharted. Hey, who so. says it's not going to be the best game in the world? Me. What if it's? What if it turns out to be your favorite Uncharted game? We'll see. Why uh, not, man? It's going to be like more compact and well-paced. It's probably going to be Probably. My thank you goes to the community. Uh, that was a fucking awesome community night last weekend. We played some Prop Hunt and Trouble in Terrace Town, and it was fantastic. I forgot how much fun I have playing those games. Prop Hunt, there were some new levels and stuff. There was one that's like underwater, and you can you can you're, you can become a fish. And so there's schools of fish swimming around, so you can like swim with the fish and stuff like that. But you gotta you can't look out of the ordinary. I, I just sick. had so much fun playing that. What's up, Brad? No, oh, I'm saying that sounds pretty sick. It it was it was fucking great. Um, uh, my hype. Uh, apparently, uh, they they cracked the Wii U again. Uh, so I might take another stab mm, yes. uh, at uh, doing mod and mine, because uh, otherwise that console is useless to me. How's the three uh, D? Isn't the three DS pretty hackable? I've heard it is, yeah. Mm. I just I've never looked into it. I worry mm. about bricking it, just because it's a casting 3ds. You know what I'm saying? Mm. If it bricks, we have to pay a lot of money for another one. Mm. Uh, so maybe I should try. Uh, no, uh, and then my sweat uh, goes to uh, Nick's PC. I'm building that tomorrow. Huh. Hopefully that doesn't get fucked up. <laughs> hey, I've never fucked up a PC build, so I'm I'm two for two. Unlike some people. <laughs> But yeah, that's it. That's my four player minute. What? Hey, so just to, for the record, my, that PC I does referring work. Referring to you? That PC does work for everything but casting. I wasn't referring to you. Also, I just said some people in the world fuck up PC builds. That's and all. it could that person may not necessarily be in this room. That you're person still could, blaming. That person you're could. Still blaming Jack. That person for could also be in PC, even after you like reformatted it. 
That's the mystery. Yeah, yeah because yeah. whatever he it's did. It's got to be harsh. I'm part. pretty sure he jizzed onto the CPU. Yeah. I mean, you he, like dumped something down. He installed like, Tomb Raider on your game and you think it, it even a reformatting the hard drive couldn't He raided Nick's tomb. <laughs> Crispy go. <laughs> My sweat this week is for Overwatch's Summer Games event because I've been playing for a while now and I still haven't gotten any of the cool skins that I want and I'm worried that the event's going to end and I'm not going to get any of the good skins. And so what are you supposed to do in a situation like that? Happens. What are you supposed to do in a situation like that? Play more or buy buy loot boxes mm-hmm. until you get them. Mm-hmm. You did. You gave him loot boxes. You did, and I didn't get anything that I wanted out of them. Who's your favorite character? Uh, it, well. <laughs> My t- my my playtime is uh, my highest is Diva by like a country mile. I probably played more Diva than the next like two or three combined. Okay. So I'd have to say Diva. She's fucking great. Boop, 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 boop. Nerf this. <laughs> All right. What else? Uh, what else? What else? My fucking uh uh. My fuck you for the week goes to Notch just because he's a piece of shit. Uh, my thank you goes to Smiley Alyssa because she's been helping me out with Hollow Knight and she's probably the only reason why I've gotten anywhere in that game at all because I get really fucking lost playing that game. But it's cool and I'm having a good time. The more maps I get, the easier it gets to yeah, it does keep with, track with of shit. Maps, yeah. um, but God, entering a new area is still like really fucking tense. Yeah, it is. Especially when you enter an area that's just filled with like teleporting enemies who are shooting tracking missiles at you and shit. It's fucking terrible uh and my hype for this week is for no man's sky oh yeah because oh Oh, it makes a comeback it is good now (laughs) and and i'm i've been thinking about the whole podcast i'm gonna go home tonight and i'm gonna play some more because fuck man like it's nice to it's nice that that world has some mystery like waiting to be explored now you know for the first time yeah really it, it's really cool. It's really cool. I'll I'll have more to say about it next week once I've gotten a uh you know a good portion of the storyline done. So cool. cool. We'll see. Thank you, Crispy. The meme lives, says Prince of the Universe. All right, uh my four player minute starts now. My hype this week goes to I'm gonna give partially to Observer. I'm yeah, I'm already about like halfway through that game probably, but I'm really enjoying it. Looking forward to playing more, and I'm really getting Looking forward to seeing kind of how the horror and the detective aspects blend together as the game goes. Uh, my other hype goes to hearing you all talk about Hollow Knight. I'm, I really, 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 really want to play that game, and I probably I might cave before it comes out on Switch. We'll see. Uh, my fuck you of the week goes to me for wanting to play No Man's Sky again after hearing Crispy talk about it. I had a feeling this was gonna happen. No, dude, fuck you. Play the game. Yeah, no, I know. Fuck Just me. I'm going to do it. Uh, my sweat is also for my new PC. You know they have a creative mode where there's no economy whatsoever. Oh, you shut, that the, sounds you shut the fuck up. I mean, it's kind of weird. Uh, it's not as fun. Yeah, new PC build tomorrow. Um, thank you, Nolan, for mm-hmm. helping. Um, I got that tower in. Whew, tower is way bigger than I was expecting It's not this for the space. One, is it? Yeah, no, it so that's that oh one. My God, Chris uh, Davis, <laughs> I picked that one out. No, it's a great. It looks like a great tower. It's just the space where too? I was putting it. It's gonna be kind of awkward, so I'm gonna move it to a different side. Not a big deal. I was just like, holy shit. Uh, anyways, I'm, I'm I am looking forward to get my little fucking USB door off. <laughs> I am looking forward to playing that. And my thank you of the week goes to Daniel Craig for finally confirming. He's back to play Bond one more time. Oh, thank God. Dude, you should yeah, be we thanking worried. Daniel we Craig for that terrible southern accent. He we're does worried to be like Idris Elba or something. Yeah, well, I will maybe after I see the movie, which maybe hopefully will be next week. I, it could have been someone it, interesting. I, I, when are they going to do the first female Bond? They're doing a female Doctor Who. Yeah. That's true. Doctor mm-hmm. Who would be Bond. Who would be a good female Bond? And yet neither of them have done an after. Haiti. <laughs> yes. Doesn't she Just not have a face? Is. Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Yeah, there we as go. As is with like the metal. Oh shit! As is like first on. black Bond and mm-hmm. female Bond. Just who breaking all kinds of ground? Who Super breaking all kinds of ground? Who's that lady? First Bond with a who's, who's the? Sorry, what? The the the, the chick from uh, uh, Game of Thrones. Which chick? There's lots of lots chicks of in Game of Thrones. The no, the the Daenerys is a uh, lady. Oh, oh uh, Masandi. Yeah, she could be a good lady Bond. Yeah. 
She was yeah. in uh, Fast and the Furious, which is kind of James Bond. Was she really? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, Wait, she's in the last few. I've never seen last Fast couple. and Furious. Oh, man. The only ones I've seen are Tokyo Drift You're and s- Two. <laughs> Tokyo Drift? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. Those man, I like Tokyo Drift. I like Two. I don't really like Drift. Tokyo Drift. Those are both Drift. bad movies. They're oh, both they're terrible. Movies. They're all terrible, in my opinion. But The second one's the one that takes place in Miami. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like racing the muscle cars, and they're jumping over the bridges and shit. Yeah. So stupid. <laughs> so stupid, so but I stupid. like it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's our show, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Fourplayernetwork.com is, of course, the website. Uh, you can look for Brad's top 10 games of all time very, very soon. We're almost ready to launch that with maybe a few other things. Don't worry, it'll be out very soon, and it's going to be worth a watch. Uh, and then we're going to continue production on the rest of our top 10 games of all time, so that should be cool. Um,. What else? What else? What else? Discord, please, if you haven't yet, join us in our community Discord. It's free. You can find us at discord.gg slash fourplayer. And if you'd like to support us financially, patreon.com slash fourplayer. And if you're watching live, don't go anywhere. We're gonna yeah, be playing we're going to be playing VR. some super hot VR mm. for a little bit here right after we cut this recording. So don't go anywhere. Good night. Bye. Bye.